Welcome everyone. We are back for the GG Millions. This is another very, very special episode. We got Brian Paris joining us here for the 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 I would say one of the most stacked final tables. Brian, we're going to talk about that. You know a lot of these names, and want to just give you a quick introduction. If you can see, he was the second player to ever pass 10 million in earnings online. Pretty impressive, over 15 million. And and Brian, man, how are you? It's been a while. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a nice opportunity to be able to do commentary on a final table like this. I'm hoping to have it be a good uh, learning experience for both of us because these are the very impressive lineup of players and, uh, you know, watch, watching like really high level ICM stuff like this is always really interesting. So I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, we appreciate you joining. I know you're over in Europe and again, you got you got three kids and you do the online grind. We've streamed Twitch a lot during the same period. We were putting a lot of time in. So it's uh, it's been a while since we've caught up. Look forward to that. And of course, some of the biggest names in the game today. We're going to see who's going to beat the best. We got uh, Michael Adamo, Adrian Mateos. So we're going to take a look at sort of their stacks, where they're positioned at the table. And again, a healthy, healthy prize pool. 10K buy-in from Sunday. Pause. Play the final table. 1.98. Basically 2 million in the prize pool. Start with the final table of nine today. And we will play to a winner as always. You can see 57,000 for ninth all the way up to 402,000 on a tournament on online poker pretty pretty special stuff i mean we used to play back in the day 200 dollars buy-ins and grind where the first place was 200k and that was unheard of and now it's a weekly tournament so you can see there's nine of 198 and you mentioned icm there is something that is always fun because that's something the best players respect but also want to go for the win so we take a look at uh, uh 119 adamo no surprise he's known as big stack guy he either kind of goes out or has a chip lead he's doing just that today and then there is ole shemian one of the most decorated players in the game live and online with this super short stack seven blind so this should be really interesting with the two you know major stacks have a have a huge stack and some of the short stacks very short we'll see if they can double up and make it interesting or they get knocked out right away and and anything that jumps out to you brian about the the positions or you know the icm who's got the most to play for or, or to be protected here what, what what stands out with this this matchup right now well it's always really interesting to watch adamo because he's one of the most aggressive players in the game and he's one of the best at putting on really big pressure in some of these icm spots so it's, re it's really nice to be able to watch him at one of these final tables yeah but with the existence of some of these very short stacks uh you know two players with less than 10 big blinds a lot of the medium stacks are going to be kind of handcuffed to start this thing off. So we're, we're probably going to have to uh, not see too much action from the medium stacks until some of these short stacks shake out, and then we might we might see a little bit more action after that. Yeah, really interesting to see him go for the button 6-7 off open, of course, though, knowing that he is going to get to get a lot of folds. So we get to see why he has 6 million chips. He's putting a lot of pressure. Also a six-time winner on the GG Million. Super impressive. Really, really great player and, and shows that here. And Oli Shemian versus a... Min raise under the gun from a vulnerable stack. Obviously a little scary, but when you have this stack size, 10 bigs, you can't be too selective. Curious your thoughts here, Brian. A legitimately tough spot with sevens, I think. I mean, the under the gun range should be on the tighter side. And uh, if he does fold here, he gets to see another orbit before he's obligated to put more money in. So uh, I think this is a very close spot for him. I can see why he's thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, that's something we kind of noticed. The world's best, they seem to like to go out on their own terms you know they like to be aggressive when they have fold equity they like to pass marginal spots this does feel like a marginal spot at the same time there is money in the middle he can't be too selective his risk premium is the lowest but we do see a pass there is probably that close right eights for sure maybe goes in nines definitely and then here sevens he just says you know what this player is not opening sixes and fives likely here with this spot and he just doesn't want to be flipping so as we see would have been a pretty good spot it looks like right sevens to ace queen he would have been ahead flipping and uh, like get called i would imagine yeah he would have got called and i think with the rng as we see would have been probably doubling up but as it as it turns out he does pass and now uh assume a has a losing hand and yeah, we're seeing if he's, he's gonna, gonna put on some pressure on the river here if he's gonna wind up mucking to a pair of fours uh it's, it's a pretty good run out for the under the gun player he does indeed at the river. Going to be hard for the four to call here, I'd imagine. Yeah, nice follow through. Has a has a key card, the queen, also ace queen. He's going to have some some over pairs, of course, with the range sort of advantage, sort of disconnected board. But very curious. It doesn't get a fold right away. And let's see if this would be a pretty impressive and and heroic call if it was able to make it with the four. Does beat a variety of hands: ace queen, ace king, queen king suited. And he's getting a decent price on it, but it, it is quite a tough call to make here. And he nice, doesn't need nice. make the fold. 
Yeah, yeah, to go back to Ole's uh, decision there, I think I think it's very close with the sevens. I think the key component is just that the under the gun player is not going to be opening very wide. If if like a Dalma were to open, then the sevens is obviously going in because you expect to be well ahead of the range there. But when the under the gun player opens off that stack, the range should be quite tight. So I, I can see why Ole wanted to pass with the uh, sevens there. He's got another opportunity here with Queen Jack suited. We're going to see if he's going to shove over Adamo's open with this hand, or if he's going to pass again. Yeah, this is uh he does go for it. I mean, he look, Damo had the six, seven off. He actually is slightly ahead. I mean, King three, Queen Jack suited about a flip. Queen Jack suited is gonna need help as the ace a seven board turn ten picks up some outs. You can see the king, queen, or jack. Any paint, or it will be Ole out. And it is gonna be GG for Ole Shemin. Welcome sight to the remaining players, not just the pay jump, but the pedigree of Ole to see him go out. No one wants to see him kind of double and get going. So that is a pay jump eight left now. And Adamo adds to his stack. Want to welcome everyone in. Let us know where you're watching from in the world. Do have a tweet out $50 giveaway cash on my Twitter, Jeff Gross poker pin. You can get that link. I will put that in a second. We are going to talk more about some of these very accomplished players, not only in poker, but GG million specific. And again, this is uh this is going to be, Vustin. We, we haven't even mentioned Samuel. Maybe you would know. You've probably battled with him as much as anyone, right? This is a guy that plays everything. Oh, yeah. He's been yeah. around forever. One of the most respected and, and notable players in the world. Maybe you could tell me a little about him and his game. He's an incredibly aggressive, incredibly good player. Uh, European on stars, right? And he, he's worked yep. with pads a lot. Uh, so, you know, he's very accomplished, very well studied, um, very experienced. So it definitely deserves to be here. He's been here many times before, I'm sure. If we just saw him raise a queen jack on the cutoff there and fold to a 26 big blind jam from 10s, uh, the, the jam might seem a little bit large, but I think with 10s, it makes a lot of sense to jam there. Yes, yeah, Samuel also has won on season two and uh, a win and one. So he's two time winner. He's won in season two and then the la this current season. So twice won Adamo six times. I believe Ole Shemian, if I'm not mistaken, he has won a pile of times as well. He's won once in season one three in season three and in season two one two so what's that five times so i mean pretty impressive there's times where we see either only one total win in the gg millions or one or two and here we have players who have six five you know two we haven't even got to some of the other greats arts are more theresian who i think last final table he had the total earnings of the entire table on gg 36 million in earnings on gg poker alone so that's not counting yeah, other that's sites insane. that's not counting live it's pretty pretty insane as we mentioned you were the number two player to ever cross 10 million back in 2017 who was it mormon was before or who was the other yeah mormon was number one i was number two it seems so small now right with the with the numbers that they have online these days um but it's really good to see that the game is still thriving this far in and the other thing that it shows is just how much skill there really is in this game uh with the, with these same guys making these final tables over and over again in this incredibly tough field as we see here quite an interesting spot where adamo has enough flush draw against the top pair from uh, Yolson, we're going to see if he's going to put a second barrel in there. He does indeed. Looks like a little bit more than half pot. Yeah, Yolson is one of the more inexperienced players here. I would say within the, the at least the, the scores, the ranking of of you can you know the note of one point eight million. That's actually the least I believe at this entire final table in terms of GG million or I'm sorry GG earnings. So he is you know that's nothing to sneeze at one point eight million on GG. So he definitely plays, but. These other guys have some crazy results, and, and now here he is on the river against a very aggressive player. Huge ICM implications, although with the stack-to-pot ratio, not necessarily going to get be able to get put to the test, and, and he's got a decent hand to call with. So I'm curious if Adamo's going to go try to put pressure on a nine or some other hands here or just sort of wave the flag. It seems like it would normally be a good spot to check, but given that it's a final table, there's extra implications that might come into play, so we may see him fire a third barrel here. He does indeed yeah, yeah. go for the check, and Yolson's going to take it down with the top pair. Never a very uh, comfortable spot, but like you said, the stack-to-pot ratio is such that he wasn't really truly at risk at any point, so he was able to show down pretty easily there. Yeah, that's one of the Austrian players here. Still sure he knows his way around the poker table. Two Austrians making the final table. We didn't have a Brazilian today. Super common. We're seeing like a Brazil and Austrian almost every time. Uh, where would you rank the power rankings for Austria, Germany, and, and Brazil now? Have, have things shifted like when you used to see the flags? Is it current day? How, how, give me sort of your top three, your podium for, for countries you give respect to. If, if you Brazil's up there for sure. Uh, Germany specifically has kind of bad tax laws around poker. So Austria is usually like the proxy for the, the best German players. I'll generally relocate. Um, so I, I'd say like Austria, 
uh, Brazil, and then maybe like Malta has a very high average quality of player. Yeah, I'd say that's that's a uh, pretty pretty reasonable. I do have the link on a pin. Put that link in the chat, guys, for fifty dollar retweet. Brian, if you you're eligible as well, I know you're you're coming on. Oh, goodness, yeah, your I, I was meaning to tweet about this in some fashion or another. So that seems like a good opportunity. <laughs> Hey, with diaper money, man, you got three kids, 50, it can go a long way. We, you, you're probably one of those guys that took 50, $50 or a free roll into your, uh, your 10 mil plus earnings from 2017. I, I, I did, so, you know, you know, 50 bucks can, it can help. It can go a long way. I started with $40 actually back in like 2003 or something. That was a long, long time ago. My first bankroll, but here we got a pretty interesting spot going here where Adama is four betting with the ACE five off, uh, Yolson coming after him, three betting ACE nine suited. And getting wow. four bet off of it, so we're seeing some very interesting, a uh, deep stack ICM poker here. The sort of things that only come into play when both players have uh, eighty plus big blinds. I, I and please forgive me. I mean, we haven't. We've kind of just been rotating through some of the players. The the fact that Adrian Mateos, I haven't mentioned his name. We've lost a player and played some hands. I mean, he is one of the best all around poker players. You know, no limit tournament players in the world. Plays the highest stakes. Won so many bracelets. He's he's young too. You would think he's in his like late thirties. He, I think he's in his like mid twenties and he's got multiple oh, yeah. bracelets. Plays the highest stakes and also been on the podcast, my podcast. Love to have you on, Brian, as well. I just realizing you haven't been on. If you ever, if you're up for that, would love to have you on uh, the, to chat. Um, but he is, he is there. He is. What would you tell me about Adrian? What's your experience playing with him? And give me a little bit of thoughts on his game. Another very aggressive, very uh, creative player. I played him a lot live on the EPT. And yeah, he definitely, he started playing quite young and playing high for a very long time. So, you know, it's, it's just another level to how impressive this final table is that he's here as well. You, you see him here often, I'm sure. Uh, I, I don't know the specific stats on this exact tournament, but he's, he's very often at the final tables of these, uh, you know, nosebleed high stakes tournaments. So he's won once in season one. He's won twice in season two. And then in season 2024 here, uh, he has won once. So what's that? Four titles. Like I said, there's times where there's not three or two total titles at the whole table. And today we've got guys who have won six, four, four, and 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 we haven't even covered everyone yet. We're kind of going through here. But again, Adrian, complete respect. Not uh, not going to uh, not going to leave you you hanging there. You you definitely. I, I got to see his total live earnings. It's actually absurd. I think it's. $41 million in live recorded <laughs> tournament earnings. He is number 13 on the all-time money list. So pretty, pretty special from him. And you see M. Jolson rocking Casino Daddy, great streamer, a fun guy as well. I, I think he's either part of the crew. I got I to gotta confirm. I know those guys can play some pretty pretty strong poker. So I got I to gotta look that up. Does that sound familiar to you? Do you know this? I don't, I'm not as familiar with this player. But I, no, I, I don't know Yolson off the top of my head. I, I've played with him on GG some, I'm sure, but I, I play a little bit lower. I, I don't play this tournament. This tournament's really tough, I think. Um, but yeah, we're seeing an interesting opening here from uh, Mateos, just not all in raising sixes on the cutoff here uh, at, at the stack depth um, and getting put to the test by Adamo. Let's see how he reacts to this one. Oh my! I might even be. I might. I might be just completely. I might. I might have to completely forgive myself again. I should look before because I wasn't. I was looking at the stats, but I think that is Mister Casino Daddy, my main man right there. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Apologies. I. I see when they do like the initial. It's. It is Matthias. So that's. I, okay. I, okay. That is. Yeah. That is. I think the the actual the man the myth, Casino Daddy. So respect. Good to see you, my friend. That's my mistake. I. I just. I. I sometimes I. Yeah. It's got to be right. It's him. It's I, I looked it up and it's Matthias and he's got the Casino Daddy logo. So there he is. Good luck. Very very cool. Very very. Big stacked opportunity for him. Today. We got a we got a big action spot here with two players having top pair and then the overcards and the open ended. He's gonna navigate this one with a big bet. It's an interesting spot because I don't know how much he really wants to inflate the variance here, but on the other hand, he does have the biggest stack. He needs to put pressure on, and he has he has a really good hand as things stand. But it's not a spot where he's really excited to like flip for a bunch or whatever. And that's not what's going to happen yet. Is uh, Boosden just calls, and we'll see what the king jack and the big blind does. He's facing a large bet and a call. Might be awkward to continue. He also has a backdoor flush draw though. Yeah, that's. I believe that's King King Massey as they were going by. I, I, again, I don't want to. I want to. I'm just messaging him. It's funny because I even have him say that Casino Daddy is such a strong brand and such a strong, you know, 
tag that I actually have in my phone saved is Casino Daddy. And that's, I think my head, I wasn't been a, <laughs> like a year since I talked to him. So I haven't registered as Matthias, but again, also been on the podcast, also has an amazing content, Twitch and, and, and over in your neck of the woods in Europe. And, and, uh, you know, I know he's actually one of those guys too. It's like, I feel like he's better at your hobby at his hobby than my profession. You know what I mean? He's like hit some yeah, huge yeah. scores and has some big streams. And I know poker is not his main thing, but obviously very capable. And here he is in a 10 K with the big stack. And that is not a welcoming card. Of course, got to be a little concerned in the situation, a pretty nice spot for Samuel who makes the stone cold nuts. And interestingly enough, these are the board too, with the queen being a straight, probably going to go pretty heavy, right? Cause there's a chance the opponent has a queen. Probably, I would imagine a large bet, but look at this. The guy just finds a check. check. I mean, this, is not going to work in this spot because this board surely going to check back. But uh, look at the wheels. I mean, interesting by the do you Did you expect to check there? I was thinking a big bet. I guess the queen's going to bet though, right? And then you get the check raise. Yeah, I, th I think he was assuming that the queen had the bet. So he was going for a check raise. But I don't really know what exactly is optimal there, especially with like the ICM wrinkle on top of it. I think it's very interesting. But I, I don't think that Jack's going to call much on the four liner. Anyway, I think the small blind flat range is like very heavy in those, uh, you know, Broadway type cards. So. Yeah, I guess the, the pros and cons, you go, you go big. You, I guess the queen's not going to check back. So I guess you get him to bet and then make a tough decision to like get off a chop versus just going for the full the sizing there. But here he goes, gets to come right back at him. And ace-nine suited a definitely a viable hand, but not fun when you get three bet out of position. They are super deep comparative to the field. It's number two and yeah, three quite deep. Here. Interesting to see how he continues. I mean, I assume he's going to continue one way or another. He might decide to four bet this exact hand, probably prefers to flat. He just folds. Well, I guess a, a wise decision there is he was up against Kings and he's going to be out of position against a very aggressive player. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe that's a reasonable way to play that hand. Uh, and, and, and again, Archer, I, Archer's on so often. I, I just don't want to like overdo it. Oh, yeah. But hardly yeah, mentioned one of the greatest yeah, like he's dead. Almost 40 million in cash is on GG alone. It's a stunning yeah. number. Every time I click on his name, million, it's just like, it's just mind boggling. It's mind boggling. Also eight titles. That is the record. Excuse me. The record on the GG millions eight times. He has taken first, not final table in season two. He had 17 final tables. I mean, that is so crazy <laughs> of a stat that it's like, no, nah, I have to like stat. Some, there's times where I write, and, 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 and I check, I'm like, guys, are, are these numbers correct? Because it's just hard to believe, but it is, that is a real thing. And uh, we are, so it's, we are it's always interesting today. to me when people complain about variance in this game, because it certainly exists. But on the other hand, the, the amount of skill edge you can have for the truly elite players is just unbelievable. And it's, it, you know, it's kind of motivational to study harder. And maybe you can catch up to some of these guys. We're going to see an interesting spot here with uh, one of the short stacks. It's a pretty good hand, ace-10, but Adamo has picked up bottom pair. He might try to do something funky here. We'll see. He's certainly capable of it. Did the flop go check-check? Ooh, Adamo with the raise. Interesting. So he's got the blocker. He's got a range advantage because he didn't get three bet pre. He's putting pressure on the shorter stack. This is a very interesting raise. Not not one a lot of players would find, but uh, hasn't worked yet. We'll see if he follows through on the river. Um, I actually did just give confirmation that is Matthias. And again, apologies. I got got a, uh, you know, <laughs> that I just a, that yeah. just means the brand is good. The brand is so strong that you don't associate the real name. It's a good thing. Yes. Casino Daddy. I, I literally haven't saved as that. It's been a year or so since we spoke. <laughs> so that's good. We're checking in. I, I, he just uh, he had his biggest score ever in the GG Spring Festival main event. I think he won that Ooh. as well. So he's in good form. Let's see if he can capitalize today. Dama's putting the pressure on here. Uh, Asuna Holika, there's two shorter stacks. So if, if he's calling here, he's risking, you know, finishing eighth when he could potentially finish sixth by just folding. But I Adamo just, is bluffing. I want to, I want to understand. So like in, in this spot, you block two pair, I guess, right? Is it, how relevant is that versus having like a six or a nine for straights? Like, cause he's opening super wide range. I mean, w with this combo, are you surprised? Or is this just a pure savage? Like what if he had King four? Does it make a difference when he goes for it, or is it just sort of this is this is just the way he's 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 attacking the, the ICM? Do you think? I I don't think he would do it with King Four, but honestly, I, I can't 
claim to know the ways of the Dalmo. Wow. I think he's on a different level wow. with some of this stuff. Big time call. Big time right there. Asmoholic repping the the Japanese flag comes in and he is one of the more unknowns here and he makes a play of the day. This is definitely a big time call. There's a lot of money at stake to go out in eighth versus just kind of hovering around. And he said, I'm here to play. I'm here to win. And that is a that is a massive call. I mean, that is not an easy call. With one hand, no, it's not. I mean, it's not. not. An easy I mean, it looks easy to us. We can see the cards, but it's not an easy call at all. I mean, it's it's uh, like I was saying, if he, if he calls and he's wrong, then he's going out with two stacks being shorter. It's a very intense ICM pressure sort of spot. But he probably knows Adamo's reputation. Maybe he knows that he's being viewed as one of the more uh, you know new sort of players. Maybe the type of person who would be getting pressure put on him by Adamo. So he correctly found the light call there. But a very impressive call. Not easy at yeah. all to, to make that decision here. And and I'm told this is a this is a although Japan of course similar like I'm American and when I do play on GG and you know when I'm able to if I'm out of the country so he is a Korean player a very talented you can see a lot of Koreans in the chat big shout out to Korea today joining us and they're watching him make a massive call for the it's late there I'll tell you what in Korea it's about four in the morning I, I and he's in there playing for a lot of money four hundred thousand dollars up for grabs guaranteed some serious money and he did put it on the line there with uh, our friend there uh, Hudson that would be very short so that is again like very 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 strong call and 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 kudos to him and let's see how he can finish here some big boys today this is brian you you chose a good final table to come to i'll tell you that this oh, yeah. is an extra stack today this is a nice one i mean these final tables are always incredible right but th this is an especially good one and we're seeing a merit trojan come in with a cutoff open king 10 offsuit pretty standard hand to raise with here he's gonna run into jacks from the big blind yeah, that's a pretty pretty nice spot. You're the shortest stack, risk premium. If you get it all in, you're not worried about going out right now and you get a spot where you have such a premium hand and you're actually just like, wow, I actually want to get called by this type of hand where you you have uh, just one over and you block the straights in there. What, how much would you prefer to get fold versus would you prefer a call always when you're this big a favorite when you're that short? Or do you think there's are there times you're just like, I'd, I'd rather just get the chips? Uh, psychologically, you always want to get a fold, right? Because you just want to be relieved and take the pot. Mathematically, you might prefer to get called with a hand this good, but um, Merit Trojan does correctly make the fold there. Uh, very close, you know, he's getting quite a good price, but at the end of the day, King 10 is just gonna be a little bit too far behind the uh, opponent's range. Well, this is a fish. Oh, you know, I just realized I'm having too much fun. It's too exciting. We haven't even got through all the player profiles. We need it. We, if you're up for it, a wager, a nice, nice meal. I'm talking families included, like a big dinner uh, wager, Brian. If you're up for it, red or black, we, we do a draft. You good with that? Yeah, sure. Of course. Let's, let's run it. I'll let you choose red or black. And then if you win, you get to choose first or second and third pick. So, and then we alternate. So that's what we're playing for right now. You choose okay. red or black. All right. I'll, I'll take black. You got black. All right. Fair enough. So you are gonna get see. Do you get to see a flop three, six, no flop this hand? I don't think, but I don't think he's no yeah, not, not even he is savage enough to defend the six, three offsuit there. All right. Well, this is, let's see, let's see, let's see if we're going to see a flop. Also not next. Let's see. Ace three suited queen. I would guess. Oh, no. Yeah. It's going to be able hands. Ace three suited open and take it down would be my guess, but you never know. Adamo does, uh, you know, maybe he'll do something. So Asimo Halleck really no, I think I'm going to guess, well, I was going to say a satellite winner, but it doesn't say that won a satellite. So all of a sudden is in this tournament has not, is the first appearance ever in the GG Millions. Number one appearance. So the first appearance, he's at a final table right away. So good, uh, good. So he has zero dollars in Super Million GG Million earnings, and he's got GG winnings of one million. So played a bit of tournaments, but no, no experience in the GG Millions here. I'm very it is a black flop. Almo here, said, three, isn't it? You said black, right? Yeah, I didn't say black. So I guess that means I'm getting it. You get the first pick. I will, I'll take second and third. You can get first. Wow. That's, wow. There's I think so that's many better, right? It's got to be higher EV to get second and third, I would think. Yeah, actually, with the stack sizes, uh, it actually is, too, because you get the chips. At least you get more chips and two. Yeah. To, all right. So, all right. Well, I'm going to roll. I got to roll the dice with the Damo to, to, to do it with the lead. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. I'll take the next two stacks then. I'll turn it. Or no, I'm going to take, take Bowser and I'm going to take Meritrosian. 
Oh, I love it. I get to get my boy then. Podcast guest. Yeah, my man, you, Matthias, um, he's on it. Let's go. He's in there. He's firing. He's bluffing into a... a oh, this is a crazy it. spot, actually, because he's firing. I, know, I don't love it. Basically. I don't think Adamo's giving up here. Man, he's got kind of a... Not a great draw, because if the eight comes in, he doesn't even have a good straight, right? The nine would be a better straight, so the ace three is actually going to take it down there. Nice. Wow. All right, well, ace three getting way out of line on that board. That's uh, not the type of board you would want to usually fire multiple barrels of ace three on, but it worked out for him. All right. Well, I got I got Yolson Matthias. So you let's see. Okay, and then got... I'll take a Sumaholic. Sumaholics. Wait, who do you got? Uh, Arthur and Samuel, right? Yeah. All right, I'll go. I'm gonna I'm gonna go down to. Uh, I'll take Mateos. All right, then I'll take I'll take the guy with the the chips. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. <laughs> That's a Luxembourg flag. Looks similar to Dutch, but it's it's a Luxembourg. So yeah, it's a, um, we'll not too far from me. me. Let's go with MV. You got MV, and then we'll we'll throw the we'll throw Elliot to. We'll just call that a wash, Elliot Hudson. Who also doesn't have much experience in the millions. He does have five caches and one final table in this season, but not nothing else. So he's probably the next least experienced. But okay, so we got four and four. Audience is going to be fifty dollars if one of Brian's players win, B Paris, and if one of mine win, it's a hundred dollar GG ticket. Fifty dollar GG ticket or a hundred dollar GG ticket. So good luck. We'll get that updated, and we are going to sweat along. We got a big dinner. We got families. We got kids. And, oh yeah, uh, that adds up. That adds this up. This is not it's a free, joke. This is not a joke of a, of a of a dinner. And and Archer's finding a, a tough time to bet into the nuts here. And um, yeah, Adamo probably can't believe it. Well, I think I think the under the gun player is normally going to have more coverage of the, the ace of diamonds because the flat is going to have less like offsuit ace x. But Adamo yeah. does happen to have it here. He raises the turn, which I'm kind of surprised to see. I wasn't I wasn't expecting a raise from him there. Um, I haven't really fully thought through the implications of how that type of board works there, but I'm at least mildly surprised to see him raise, but I don't know if he's going to get much more money by calling anyway, and he's going to take that pot down. Yeah, I guess also he thinks sometimes there could be the there could be that combo, the suited combo, and also he could have a set or some hand where he just doesn't want to doesn't want to get rid of it and, and we're going to build a bigger pop. But yeah, very interesting. And I think the ace four suited Adamo's looking for reasons to three, but although this is the shortest stack, and kind of interesting if he wants to three bet small and then just call it off, I guess. Or I wonder if he ever is a world. Yes, so. I mean he's wow. he's going for it and it worked out for him. But yeah, I'm not, I assume he was going to have to call if if it came down to it there. But very interesting, very fun, very fun to watch Adamo work. He is cooking five point yeah. seven million. He, he does some stuff you would not expect, names. like the king five hand. It didn't work out for him, but that's that's a hand that very few players would find that line with. I think. Yeah, yeah, he plays a different brand. And here's Samuel with a interesting decision as the number three stack, very healthy number three. I mean, it's super one, tier one hand, ace, king, suited. He's going to three bet. Uh, does understand he could make, get himself into some scenarios that are that are Im impactful. But either way, he is going to attack. And, and Adamo doesn't like to give up. You can see that chess clock at four minutes, 50 seconds. He's been spinning. He's in a lot of hands. So he's thinking a lot. Yeah. And he is <laughs> debating. He is going to give that one up. It correctly passes on that one, but always tempting to get out of line when you have one of the ace blockers in these ICM spots. There's a lot more uh, hands that get kind of end bet pre, less less post flop spots. So you know it's always always tempting to put in those three bets with the ace x or the four bets with the ace x. But he does correctly pass there. Here he's got a nice one, ace queen suited, and uh, Suna Hawk with the eights is just going to fold. I guess the existence of the two short stacks. And then one other somewhat short stack makes it too hard for him to continue with hands even as good as eights there. Yeah, it says 193 entries. I'm not sure it was 198 or it was a 1.98 million prize pool. So maybe it was actually, yeah, 198 or I believe. Um, but yeah, about 200. Yeah, it says 198 in the lobby. And Adamo getting distributed. Same sort of thing. Ace king, ace king against 10s this time. Last time it was ace queen suited against 8s. This time the 10s will continue. And uh, I think it's going to be awkward right off the bat here, but we'll see. Brian, where can where can people connect with you the most on social or Twitch streaming? What kind of what what kind of stuff are you doing currently where people can watch or follow? I'm mostly on Twitter, um, but you know I'm also increasingly involved in crypto. So I'm on Friend Tech as well. If any of you guys are using that, uh, I haven't been Twitch streaming Twitch as much. 
uh, now that we have three kids, it's, it's quite hard to find the time, honestly, but I, I might get back into it at some point. So we got an action turn here where uh, Asuna Hawks can hit a set and Adama with the nuts straight. But yeah, Twitter's the best place to find That's where I'm most active at twitter.com slash poker. And what a turn that is. I mean, you can't really get more more wild than that. I mean, at the same time, Ace King, and also for Adamo, though, right? He's just got such a wide range, although you could see it's early position. Ace King's a logical hand. Still, you hit a set, you're crushing so many hands, the, the, and, and it's just hard to believe Adamo really can have. Oh, man. Ooh. Oh, man. What a... What a spike for the, the Korean player. Finds tens full, and now he does lose to Jax, does lose to, to Queens. But really, I mean, this is a much different. There's a lot of the combos, Ace King, and Adamo probably going to just really unload the clip here, right? Maybe all of it? I mean, it makes a lot of sense. He's got, he I can think so. I mean, it's, queen you know, or you're only losing to three boats, really, just uh, Queens through tens full. Those hands three bet pretty at some frequency. So, yeah, really unlucky for Adamo there. He's going to see the bad news, but what a, once what I turn a hits, you know, the money's going what in, I think. Run out. The chat is going crazy because the Korean man, he is a absolute legend, made the call. He's from Korea. He is crushing, and the chat is going berserk. He's got 4.5 million. Is here. That is your chip leader right now into first place, and what a moment right there. He has punished Adamo in a few spots. Once called the bluff, second time cooler him. But here he goes, $4.5 million, a whole new ball game right now today. And the chat is literally losing their mind. Yeah, he earned it, honestly, after that ace-10 call, I think. I'd say he earned it. So it's nice to see him take a chip lead there. We'll see how he does with it. To be fair, yeah, Japanese flag. I'm told I have the, the note is that he's a Korean player. But either way, this is he's he's he is in control of this final table. And there are people speaking. It's Korean in the chat. And they're going nuts. And here we go. King, queen, suited to queens. Why does it feel closer than it is? Ooh. And that is a crazy yeah. <laughs> lock. King, queen has got a lock to at least chop, if not win here. And it is going to be that. And Samuel going to have a little chink in the armor. Just a little little nugget. But this thing is sort of uh, this thing is going around right now, Brian. There's no one wanting to go home. We've lost one. People are doubling. Chips are getting spread out. And this is a going to be an interesting play out in the final table. Only really Mateos is super short now. Yeah, it's been a lot of action so far, and I expect a lot of action uh, from here on out as long as Adamo is still in there with some chips. Now we got an open with Queen Jack and then Ace 10 in the big blind. Ace 10 has the best hand, but it's going to call pretty hard to three bet there. Not, not quite the sort of hand you want to three bet with. Lop, not much. We'll see how much pressure Asuna Hallock decides to put on here. Yeah, nine four deuce definitely a board where you're going to see a, a C bet and some some good turns to continue. Also, just gets to put pressure on certain hands and Samuel, you know, realizing that there is hands like this that he is beating Queen Jack, King Queen, all these Broadways, but also he's in bad shape against a lot. So let's see with this turn card if he is able to keep the pressure on. He does check back and now E ten. You've got to feel pretty good if you're Samuel with the Ace ten top top when it check back oh, yeah. turn here. I'm kind of surprised to see him check on the seven. I, I would think, especially when it's full rainbow on the turn, that makes it so that your opponent's uh, backdoor flush floats all missed. So it's, it's generally a pretty common turn to bet again with queen jack here. Um, but yeah, now, now that the 10 is hit on the river, I can't imagine that uh, he's going anywhere. And ace 10 will take it down. Does take it down. Nice pick up there, Samuel, after losing that all in. Pretty good spot. Didn't it? It felt like Queen's the King Queen suit. It just doesn't feel like that big a favorite for some reason. It just I mean, it's, it's only about a two to one favorite. It seemed like, you know, you'd think it'd be more because it's kind of like dominating. But yeah, the combination of the suitedness and, yep. and if the King hits, there's only one out to re hit the Queen. It makes, it makes it so it's closer than it should be. Nine's taking it down there for a Domino. And sixes against King Queen. Oh, tens in the small blind too. So this could this could be a spicy one. Tens, King Queen suited, and sixes. And just gonna shove. And tens is all in, and sixes might find the fold here. I think it's a pretty standard call in Chippy V, but at a final table ICM situation, it probably is not. Dalmo's range is, of course, quite wide in general, though he's not going to be opening as wide with the big stack and the big blind. Also, with Mateos so off. short, right? Mateos and Hudson shorter than this player by a significant amount, probably even a little tighter, shoving, just not going to just yes. be women it in. 
I think sixes is not like a trivial fold, but I think ultimately it's going to be a fold here. You could see it was painful. This guy, Adamo likes to play for roles. He's, he's, he's opening king he five offsuit on the hijack, you know, so sixes on the cutoff is, is pretty high up there. So for him to fold that hand, it's not, it's not trivial, but I, I do think he ultimately had to fold there and he, he found the fold. Sevens under the gun open and looks like that might get the job done. One thing to note, everyone is using minimum sizing at the final table. I think that's uh, sort of like an ICM thing. You don't have to use as big a bet sizing preflop. There's kind of this like implied extra pressure behind even just entering the pot pre. So you'll, you'll see a lot of just min raising. Uh, whereas in the earlier stages, you might see like a 2.3 or 2.5x sizing. Yeah, I do want to point out Elliot Hudson also another, again, just sort of going through as we see Adamo get the aces and, and Mateos in bad shape. Elliot Hudson did win the WPT for $4 million at the, the big one. He's the guy who took Yeah, that's the, the, that's the, the funny thing about this this final table is even the relatively unknown guy is still like an incredibly impressive player with a ton of accomplishments, right? I mean, it's, it's just, it's just this is a really tough tournament, and anyone wow. who even cashes this thing is doing a pretty good job of it. If it's it was a, to go running... Oh, it is a club, but it is a four. Wow, that would have been the eight-eight run out. <laughs> yeah, running eights would have been that, pretty. Uh, it was a green card. Legendary. It was a green card. It was the green, the right eight was available, but that that is tough. Set over set as it's all in pre, and here we go. Adamo back to four. Mateos, GG brother, guy is again. If you don't know Adrian, take a look. Pretty impressive, as we mentioned. Thirteenth all-time money list, forty plus million in live earnings. He has done his fair share of work on the GG millions as well i see that season one one win two i mentioned in season two and then one as well so four titles in the gg million and 40 plus mil live i mean that is a guy knows how to play some poker and is dangerous but he will be out and welcome site pay jump seven left as the players are all not not super short elliot now with seven hundred fifty thousand. your shortest stack but yeah pretty pretty sweet score four million to hit a live score that's not a bad 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 result and we got the uh yeah it's not a bad resort at all. not a bad result at all we got the ace queen mirror match here Dama with the ace of hearts though we'll see if he manages to put enough pressure on to get mirror trojan off the same hand yeah he was against benny glazer heads up in 2022 i believe it was 22 or 3 2022 where he took down 4.1 million benny glazer 2.8 million so Pretty uh, pretty special stuff there as wow. we see a nice bet from Adamo just really putting the heat on. Yeah, nice. A nice uh, leveraging of the stacks there. It's quite hard for uh, Merit Trojan to continue twice given the uh, presence of the short stack and the other similar stack. So a, a nice second bet there from Adamo. Blocking the nut flush draw helps as well, I think. We'll see if Adamo wants to defend the big blind here. He does indeed see a flop. Stacks are quite deep, and he's getting a good price free. Didn't hit very much there. He's got a little bit of a backdoor going on, but if he's facing some pressure, it might be hard for him. We'll see what happens. This does seem like the board, though. Versus, you know, Even though it is against under the gun, so stronger range, but the 9-3 suited the backdoor spades. It looks like a lot of backdoors, straights, a lot of turns. But again, probably also, as you said, some respect, Samuel knows two great players. So it's kind of uh, when when you start ticking the boxes to go crazy and check raise and start stepping out. You're at a final table, ICM. You're out of position against a good player. You know you start start can't go for every single spot. I'm sure he was thinking about it though. Oh yeah, yeah. It's always tempting, you know, with those back doors and everything. But against against under the gun as well, plus the slightly bigger sizing, I can see why he decided to cut bait on that one. He's going to limp a pretty weak hand here, but getting a very good price to limp the small blind and similar stacks, going you know, to tamp down on the amount of raising he faces. Um, Adamo up slightly ahead with queen high, but Vazen with the uh, straight draw might be able to put more pressure on. Yeah, Suma Halak is your chip leader, but Adamo, Samuel, and Jolson are so tight there. 4.2, 4.1, 4.1, and... What was this now? 4.2. So this is like, this is actually pretty crazy stack distribution with four huge stacks basically tied. I don't think we've seen this particular 
distribution in a GG million before with, with this many players left seven left four with over 4 million. I, I don't know if that's happened like right on 4 million Eric short Arthur also 1.8 kind of lurking there. The good decent seat to the left of the chip leader. I mean, I guess there's multiple chip leaders, but he uh, feels comfortable at any stack size. Queen King going to get top pair, take it down. Yeah, that defend in the big one with eight nine offsuit. Interesting there. Obviously, a standard defend normally uh, in an ICM situation. Given the presence of the shorter stack, it's maybe a little bit dicier. It might it might still wind up being a call, but I, I just wanted to point that out. Um, Adamo opening with an ace on the cutoff, and then he's going to be facing ace jack suited out of the small blind. Pretty easy shove, and a much quicker fold this time. Yeah, a lot of notes today. A lot of interesting hands. That king five was was really interesting. Nice uh, to try and think of. otherwise too. There's been some light four betting and some sparring going on for sure, but a bit aggressive play. Yeah, Dalmo four bet with the uh, ace five offsuit. Sunaholic raising blind versus blind, and Merit Trojan's going to make the call here with queen four suited in position. Neither player hits the flop. Sooner Hawks gonna switch to checking. Or picks up a pair of fours. Might be enough to get him to show down here. Yep. Queen four. Goes for a half size pot. We'll pick it up. And I'm trying to protect his equity there, figuring yeah. he's uh, ahead against the range from Masuda Hollock after checking twice and correctly so that time. A couple interesting hands here. Got a multiple time commentator, Michael Wasserman, in the chat, giving B. Paris some love for the commentary. Also, a player that knows knows his way around the final table and has have some very good results. How well do you know Mike? Have you you, you play with him before? Oh yeah, Mike and I made a course together. Actually, if you want to check that out, it's my pinned tweet on Twitter. But um, yeah, we made a couple of courses together about beating mid stakes and uh, tournament fundamentals. So if you guys are interested, uh, highly recommend Mike's coaching acumen. And he's been playing a really long time, like me. We've both been around forever, you know, since the mid two thousands, playing everything with these high numbers on pocket fives or whatever. At least what was formerly high numbers before tournaments like this came into vogue. But yeah, highly recommend Mike. Great guy. Check them out, and if you're interested, you can check out our uh, course on my Twitter. Very cool. Well, yeah. Again, Brian, you and what about Twitch? What's your what's your how how's your sort of uh, day like your current allocation of time with with content and, and any streams and stuff? Because I, I I know you during around was a 2018 19 20 we streamed a lot. Like both of us were streaming a lot. Obviously, kids and such. All right, what, what is uh? Give me give me your sort of um content other than you know courses how much time are you spending with courses versus playing versus studying versus streaming i haven't been streaming as much since having uh, three kids it's been tough I, i've tried to revive the stream a couple of times and it's just hard to keep the momentum you know and by the time i get done with the kids i just want to come up here and kind of play poker in silence but i'm, I'm still playing a decent amount yeah uh, I, have, I have a few side projects including the courses that mike and i are making we're updating those uh a lot as well so we're, we're working on that some but yeah mostly mostly playing for me and then, uh, you know, working on some coaching stuff on the side and then a lot of studying, you know, keeping up with the game these days is is uh, increasing amounts of work. It's it's not like it was back in the past where you kind of coast on your body of knowledge. You really have to be like constantly updating everything and yeah. checking spots and, and making sure you're on top of things. So I, I do spend an increasing amount of time studying. But uh, yeah, between playing, studying the kids and a few side projects, I'm, I got a lot on my plate here. Going to Monaco in a couple of weeks for the EPT. That should be fun. Very nice. How how much live are you going to? How many stops a year do you get to now? Are you going mostly EPTs? Trying to do more this year. Last year I was I took kind of a year off from live because the baby was uh, less than one. Now she's one and a half, so I think it's a little easier for us to travel. Um, so we're we're trying to hit a few more stops this year. I went to Paris. I made day four of the main there. It's a really fun experience. Uh, I, I like that a lot. So I'm, I'm trying to play a little bit more of the EPT this year. I'm seeing a big bet on the turn here from Asuna Hall. This is a monstrous overbet uh, 1.7x pop 
Yeah, with 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 a lot of hand. I mean, he's got the eight, but he's with the eight jack suited. He's got the flush draw, straight draw, and Samuel looks entertained. He looks amused, interested, engaged. You could say all those things, but ultimately, just a lot of heat to put on there for that. So he does get out of the way, and the blinds are up. That was a quick twenty hands, thirty five k, seventy k. Players playing fast. The chess clock. If you note in the middle, if you run out of that time, you then have five seconds to act on each street. So. Not too many short, but it is Michael with three three minutes and change there. He has taken a bit of time, and uh, we have seen it run. We've seen double zeros actually in matchup before. Heads up, been pretty pretty exciting to add the that chess clock element to it. As we are going to go and see now a a six offsuit cutoff, and, and Samuel going to pounce with the ace eight, get the ace ten suited to fold pretty quickly. Yeah, the snap pulled from the ace-10 suited, and, you know, it's hard to blame him, but on the other hand, you didn't have the best hand uh, against these two players in particular. Maybe you should at least think about it, but the, the presence of that shorter stack, it's very hard to pull the trigger there with ace-10 suited. So I, I don't really blame him for folding. Um, back yeah, over to Adon. Pretty... Now we'll see if he wants wow. to get out of line here. He does. <laughs> I mean, this is... Uh, Adamo really doesn't disappoint. He just... He just comes in and and really just doesn't does not disappoint. Samuel doing a little math, thinking about if I click here, you know, I can go up to 1.4, 1.5. What happens? I still have 1.6, and maybe he just has to wave the flag. This has got a little 2006, eight whatever yeah, year that is, was. This is old Sam school. Grafton referenced, right? The the uh, the oh, there it is, 1.4. It is. Just don't know. Maybe ace five suited would be the one he's gonna unload it, but ace six off, he's gonna just say, My goodness, asserts himself with the with the hand new hand of the day right there. I mean, that was putting a lot on the line, and he is now your chip leader, basically tied with Asuma Holic. And the Koreans are in the chat supporting here. Big, big shout out to everyone watching 1500 on right now, Brian over in Europe. Wow. I'm in Miami. I'm actually headed to Dubai for the first time here quick shortly. I've never been. Have you been over there? No, I have not yet, but uh, I hope to make it eventually. That sounds sounds pretty nice. So enjoy. Yeah, should be should be cool going to a karate combat event, sort of like UFC, but for karate. So if you guys haven't oh, heard cool. of that, should check it out. It's it's very interesting. I'm 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 impressed with uh, what's going on. I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. It's one of those things I hear about so much. Dubai, Dubai, Dubai. Yeah, it's they got a lot of stuff going on over there. Just just never been really interested to check it out. If anyone has any suggestions or ideas there i'm 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 open i'm looking around and, and taking in a lot of info but yeah i think it's it's one of those places there's a lot to do it seems like a vegas miami sort of like what i hear even though and casinos are coming i don't know if you knew that i did not know that until recently They're i didn't getting, know that i think a, a win is coming soon and this is a big shove from arthur with queen and 10 he shoved the previous hand quite light as well he shoved king six suited against uh Vausten's cutoff open last hand so this hand he's shoving 30 big blinds with queen 10 suited uh, correctly assessing, I guess, that the opening range is so wide that he can just attack it kind of with impunity. So he got both of those through there with uh, somewhat light shoves. Adamo now with a real good hand. Ace Queen suited. And Elliot will fold the big blind. Yeah, I mean, I, it's just, it's so, poker's so crazy. You got Elliot Hudson here playing with Samuel. We already saw Mateos. Leave us. We got Arthur Mortiz in. We got Casino Daddy, the legend, Matthias. And then, you know, he, he's got probably the biggest score out of all these guys, right? Four million dollar score is something you just you, you play your whole life. And obviously that's you, the over under to hit that in main events or playing a 10K buy in tournament's not going to be very easy to do. So pretty, pretty impressive stuff. Good to see him here battling online in these this 10K. So that's a sweet price point for him, though. 10K for four mil. Can't win that today, but can win. 10% of that, 400000 up for grabs. You can see the payouts in the lower left. He is going to battle with some of the best, and he's got his work cut out for him as the short stack currently. Seven left. Playing to a winner. This is a really impressive tournament. On, I mean, this this tournament's really tough, and it's, it's a nice showcase of some of the best that uh, poker has to offer. Got, got some in the chat saying, DT saying, I remember you. Uh, you're still at it at your girlfriend's dad's kitchen 10 years ago. He's referencing my what now wife. So yeah, I guess it was, that's actually my fiance. Cause we were getting married in two days. That was a 25 hour stream in Brazil. The only time I've played that more than probably 14 hours. So that was uh yeah, there it is. That was, that was, that was uh 2016, I think. 
So yeah, maybe eight. Is that when you started? That's the, that's the year I started on Twitch is 2016. Yeah. Um, Patrick's asking when I'll play the 10 can GG. Well, I, I'm in Miami and I would love to play. Honestly, again, it's safer behind the commentary. These guys are super tough and you know, 10 K online. What do you, what do you equivalent that to uh, equate it, Brian? Is that like a 50 K live? I mean, it's a pretty tough, it's pretty tough, tough, man. Game. It's probably like a 50 or hundred K live. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's no joke. You know, it's, this is like, as like I said, this is as tough and as good as it gets. Yeah. So when I'm, when I am, when I am, it's the same thing as you said. I love Twitch. I stream so much. I, I traveled around the world, have great memories before kids, but it's a little different to take a laptop and go around and, and do it. I mean, there are times to where I go to Brazil for a month or two and I've, I've looked at some WSOP events online. It'd be a good time to do it, right? But it's, it is hard to rebuild like streaming out of nowhere. You get on there and it's cool. It's fun, but you're giving up focus to stream and the players are already so good. And then you're not, if you're not going to do it daily and make it your thing, it's also, it's a, it's a big, uh, Big undertaking to try to, you know, if you, it's fun though. It is kind of fun to do it once in a while. I just, I just don't see myself right getting back into full time streaming for sure. But it is, it is, it is fun to be able to do it and, and play. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, three it's, kids. It's a I lot of, uh, you know, I've got a lot of respect for people who keep up the consistency on it because it is, it is really a lot of mental effort, especially to do it while you're playing day in day out. So you know, people who are still streaming on Twitch all the time, a lot of respect. It's, it's hard. You know, I did it for like I don't know four or five years, and it's, it's not easy. It, it can be fun for sure, but it, it is a, uh, it is a commitment. Adamo trying to three bet that one, but he ran into the ace king from Yolson, so predictably did not work for him. And he is now uh, sort of middle of the pack, down a little bit from his peak, but still with plenty of chips to maneuver with. Quite a good structure here. The average stack is uh, quite deep for a final table. Yeah, ace four nines. The one over has come, and he happens to have not just the ace, but the top two. Hard to flop that strong. I mean, nines again. You're against the big blind range, so it's kind of a kind of a tough spot, right? You want to protect your hand against the random overs. You don't necessarily think the big blind has an ace. And honestly, this this board might make sense to check raise, right? A lot of draws. You're in the big blind. Could have five six. Could have some other hands, maybe check raises. He's super high up. If a player has ace, queen, ace, king, ace, jack, they're not going to fold. So he does go for a big raise. And yep. are you are you expecting a mandatory with this situation to check raise with that board and the ace four? Do you think that there's merit to just call? I think you can go either way. I, I also might go for a smaller size if I did raise. But, um, yeah, it's a spot where under the gun really can't have any of the low cards. So you're not too worried about like the gut shots sitting on the turn. The under the gun basically just like can't have those cards unless he has exactly ace five suited or whatever. It, um, it, you see Elliot get curious there. You, it does look kind of weak, right? That huge array size. Yeah, it looks, it looks very flush draw heavy. But at the end of the day, it's just when you're behind, you're just so far behind. You can't really justify continuing with nines. Yeah. Very interesting open here. Eight five suited. Uh, maybe attacking specifically the short stack and the big blind, but uh, I'm kind of surprised to see him open this this exact hand here. And barring some sort of crazy line out of Elliot, it looks like it's gonna work out. Min bet should be enough to get the job done. Elliot does have the jack of clubs, but that's not quite enough to justify continuing here, I would expect. And Elliot is getting quite short now, so a lot of these medium stacks are going to be somewhat handcuffed uh, by the presence of such a short stack. We'll see how long that situation continues for. Walk for Adamo. Yeah, Adamo's really getting his money there. worth today. Playing a lot of hands. Oh yeah, man. He's I mean he's four bet. Every time he has an ace in his hand, it's just like four bet. He's uh, one of yeah. one of the best, you know, ICM pressure sort of guys out there. And it's it's, not, it's always great to watch him. I feel like you're yeah, it, it, it's a learning opportunity every time you get to watch him play a big final table like this. And unfortunately for Elliot, he's got a very uh Easy shove here, and he's going to run into. Well, hmm. we'll see. He might have, he might have to get through a flip here. It's possible that Adamo just folds though. 
No, he does continue. Okay. Yeah, Adama's hit a queen, so that's that's bad news for Elliot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Adamo just deciding this hand just plays well, even behind in these spots for this type of holding. It's, just... it's a very good hand. It's it's yeah. mildly awkward with, with the bigger stack behind, but, uh, you know, Bowson doesn't have a huge incentive to go, like, super out of line versus the call, I guess. So as long as there's no ace here, we will be down a player. And we are down to six now. Adamo getting back in the game a little bit. He'll have uh, over three million. Yeah, another another very competent player. Again, it's hard to say when you have anyone who can beat a main event field and win four million at ten k. Again, don't have a lot of info on Elliot, but nice score for him here online. Hope to see more of him playing on the GG millions and Arthur number seventy nine all time money list fourteen million in live earnings. He has. I gotta see. I gotta do the math. I mean, this was like last time I looked. He totaled the entire final table GG million earnings. He had thirty. He has thirty seven million earnings this time. It won't be the case though because you got. Ole Shemian, who was out in ninth, he has 12 million lifetime earnings on GG alone, which is crazy. You've got uh, Adrian, who has 14 million, almost 15 million in GG earnings. You have Samuel with 16, almost 17 million in GG earnings. And then you've got, yeah, Michael Adamo with 11.6. So this is, uh, again, super stacked. You can look at it, slice it live online, GG earnings, GG million earnings, however you want. These guys have got a lot of... A lot of experience, a lot of earnings, a lot of respect in the poker community, and also a lot of awareness about each other's game. So it's yeah. uh, it's it's interesting to see how they approach that. A lot a lot of history amongst them, and that's sort of the case. Very different, Brian. You said you do coaching and you do some courses on these. A lot of more larger fields, right? It's different when it's this big buy in smaller 100, 200 person fields. You can have a lot more read base, a lot more exploits than when you're playing sort of. Uh, and in a huge field with players you're not going to see a lot. Could you tell me what you prefer in general playing? It's a very different game, yeah. I'm, I prefer to go a little lower and try to go for the mid-stakes fields just because I think it's kind of lower-hanging fruit. You know, if, if you want to work really hard and try to be one of the very best in the game, you can compete at this level, but it, it's tough to keep up with these guys. I mean, they, this is no joke. You know, these guys are studying day in and day out. They got groups. They got uh, massive databases. You know, they're they're very intelligent, very driven people. So if you want to try to compete with them, um, you know, you can, you can really step up your game and try to do it. But personally, I prefer to go a little bit lower than that, try to play against uh, some softer money. You know, I still work hard on my own game, but, um, the bigger fields at the mid stakes, it's, it's definitely a different approach. You want to, you want to kind of just play more of a style to get like a big stack in the mid stages. Whereas here, it's like, you, like you said, these guys have a ton of history. They, they have all these, um, you know, history against each other and all these exploits and, you may see some hands that don't make that much sense on the surface, but then you realize that there's, you know, all this history between the guys and it, it might be something to do with that. We have an action spot here with the uh, Bowson three betting light. Well, not light, but three betting ace 10. And uh, unfortunately for him, Masuna Holek has woken up with ace king. Yeah, this is a, this is a good timing here in the small blind to get the raise three bet and you have the goods and you don't even have, it's not like a Queens or, jacks or ace king ace king hand some sort of spot you actually have a guy with his hand in the drawer who is you know i don't think with this action versus under the gun and then the three bet that a cold four here is gonna welcome samuel to think about much more i mean he's in such a good spot and osmaholic i don't think would have much reason to go crazy there especially with his stat yeah, he's not gonna get too far out of line yeah. it was a good three bet in the first place so he did correctly catch yolson opening light with ace five offsuit so it was all set up to work for him, but unfortunately, ran ace king behind. Prudently got away. Asunaholic uh, continues to cement his chip lead a little bit here, but it's still quite close with four stacks really in the running. Yep, we got queen eight suited fours. Interesting to see a three x here. I would expect you to see an open jam. And. Yeah, this is a bit peculiar because Queen Eight suited use hand you kind of like defending here in the big blind, but also against the size, it is different. It's abnormal. It's also against short stack and does get the full. This is a good result for MV there with the hand like definitely that. Definitely a good result. Definitely a good result. Yeah, it's kind of a nightmare if you're if you're three X is called there by Queen Eight suited, and then you have to go to the flop with fours. You don't know, you know, if the opponent hit or not. Um but it worked out for him that time. Interesting spot here. Sina Hallock Ace seven suited, but you also with aces.
going to be making a three bet, of course. Now we'll see what Asuna Hollock wants to do. It's a spot where you have a lot of different options with the position, the suited ace, a late position open. Correctly makes the fold. Kind of a tight fold, but worked out very well for him there, given that he was up against aces. Walk there. Six players remain. Still fairly deep stacks. So it looks like the blinds are going up again soon. And here we go. 40, 80. Push the action a little bit more here. Speaking of action, we got some nice hands on the uh, button and cutoff from two very aggressive players in this hand. We'll see how this uh, transpires. Dama, of course, going to open. And King Queen on the button will either be three betting or flatting. We'll see. Just going to flat this time. Not wanting to open himself up to the uh, end bet wars. It's going to a flop. Both players at a piece. Adama with the top pair, of us and with middle pair and a backdoor flush draw. Third pass event from Adamo. Yeah, ace nine, king queen. Definitely understands. Nice to have the heart here. Let's see, Samuel does call. He is medium up in the range, but he is behind and now very curious with this particular turn holding what Adamo's gonna do. He's got that 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 chess clock really working. Two minutes, two minutes left versus most other players, six minutes plus. Yeah, it might come down to the wire for him. Uh, Merit Trojan hasn't used any of his in contrast. He's got 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Just automatic on every decision. Um, but yeah, Adamo in the tank here on the turn, deciding whether to bet again for value. He does go for about a third one more time, which is what I was uh, thinking would be reasonable for this hand. Now, Bowsen with a good price and a, still a pretty good hand, but uh, does make the call again. We go to a jack on the river. Doesn't help either player. It's possible that some sort of uh, creative bluff is underway here. Also possible this goes to showdown. We'll see. Yeah, king queen. I mean, this is a this is definitely not the pot's big. King queen, ace nine. King queen definitely just gets a little scary. He's just gonna come in and, and confidently throw the the bet in here. It's a small size. I think I like it. Keeps his range uncapped. Um, you know, he's obviously gonna have ample coverage of this board as the preflop raiser. He'll have a lot of garbage too because he's just playing such wide ranges. But I think this is reasonable. We'll see what the response is. Awkward hand. He doesn't really want to call here. He's up against a third barrel. Um, but, you know, he also doesn't necessarily want to turn it into a bluff and raise. So that this sizing actually puts him in quite an awkward spot with King Queen. He does correctly make the fold. The Domino's going to take that one down. Puts him back to a little bit over $4 million. And for third place as of right now. Yeah, again, stacks still, the top stacks very tight. Samuel very healthy, 3.4, 1.2 in it. Still with, this is a lot of play left. We got we got our, about an hour in so far today, a little over an hour, and we've lost a few players, but pretty deep today. Pretty deep stack, 400K, a little bigger than normal payouts as well for a regular one. 1.5 million last week, Mike the Mouth was on as the guest. That was that was fun. He, uh, he's, he claimed he doesn't know what ICM is until in the last like year, which is like kind of, I mean, that's hard to fathom. Like that you aren't aware or heard that, but you know, like, yeah, with, I mean, I, I might believe it with him. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting guy, obviously a legend in the game, been around forever. Um, I, I assume he understood the concept maybe under a different term, you know, uh, you know, the, the exact terminology maybe is something newer than what he's used to, but 
Yeah, definitely. Definitely a legendary player who's been around the game for a very long time and high high name recognition. Always always fun to have him on to, to hear about. You see Asuna Holic betting quite small in the river here with trips on a four flush board. Yeah, this is this is this is a this is always fun to see again who disregards ICM, who kind of just goes for it, who 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 really you know steps steps in line, who goes for aggression, who goes tighter. And and the thing is with the Damo, you could say he disregards ICM, but in some ways it's like he understands it probably more than anyone, right? And even though it looks like he's playing super aggressive, he puts a lot of pressure on um you know, it's it's uh it's it's just curious. Do you, are you surprised at times by players do you feel that players the, the best players in the world change sort of their approach like what do you think the biggest factors are like a samuel or a, a damo in terms of respecting icm at a final table is it the, the other players is it the position is it their stack what, what are things that you sort of vary from your your when you look at icm on a given day are you just always aware of it and trying your best to to get the the, the most money i mean is that is, how do you how do you how do you explain icm to the audience it's it's almost like you're playing a different game than like the chip EV stages. It's like the incentives change a lot and then uh, sort of like the default tactics change a lot to where like in these in these final table spots, you're going to see a lot more small re-raising, pre-flop, less flatting, that sort of thing. But it, it's really important to just look at as many different spots as you can and try to internalize certain like rules of conduct that you want to follow. Um, but it, it's honestly one of the best parts of uh, No Limit Tournament Poker because there's so many subtle differences in all the different stack sizes and the exact stage of the tournament and all these things that you can just study it endlessly and always be learning new things about ICM. Um, so I, I think this is really sort of where it separates like the truly great players from the uh, merely good players because there's a lot of scope for creativity. There's a lot of scope for like dramatically shifting ranges based on who has what stacks. Um, so I, I think, you know, it, watching truly great players like this play in heavy ICM spots is some of the most interesting uh, tournament poker content you'll get. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it is fun to see. I mean, I just, I love watching different, you know, it's, it's just like, there's time, like the King five or certain hands where you just like fine. There's just, again, the game is so intricate. There's so many different options, possibilities, anytime, anywhere, the how, who's sitting where, what the stacks are, what, what the jumps are. And just, you just never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. I love saying that in poker and I see it. just like, you don't know what's going to happen. This guy has this style, but he does this. We saw an insane bluff last week. A player risked it all with like six, seven left or eight left on a triple barrel check raise bluff. And, you know, just went for it. Like he was like fourth or something and eight left and got called by aces, scary board. He had a key card and, and went for it and got called. Right. But it's just like, I just couldn't believe he took that spot, you know, that he actually followed through and then the guy called, but it's just, it's just, it's fun, right? The game's fun. And you just, it's always different, a little bit different. Yeah. So the good thing about tournament hold'em is like, even at the very highest levels, it's not a boring game. It's a very aggressive, interesting layered, like intricate game with a lot of mixed strategies and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's good news for us poker fans that like the more higher level poker gets solved, it actually becomes more interesting because you know, the, the correct way, to play, you know, quote, quote, correct is, is actually quite a fascinating, aggressive, sort of interesting strategy. Um, we're seeing here a small block bet from uh, Bowsden with third pair. I don't think it's going to work out for him. He's going to get at least called by the king, but kind of interesting sizing here. Yeah, really nice river for the king nine suit. Of course, would have liked to make the nuts, but uh, hits the king. He has a nine. I mean, I, I think that he's probably just going to call all things considered, but maybe with the sizing, he could go for a raise. I mean, it's just kind of hard to imagine what. I guess the thing is with blocking, having the clubs is nice though, right? To raise when you improve the top pair, because it looks like maybe you could have some, like the misdraw um, that maybe, but, but, but there, I would just think a call, right? It just seems like. I think so. I think, I think he was considering raising, but decided against it. And yeah, I think having the nine helps as well. Cause you know, you're not up against the nuts uh, as often. Yeah. But he does just a huge storm in Dubai, like huge flooding, crazy. Yeah, storm. sorry, I heard something about them like seeding the clouds intentionally or something, and and I, I don't know. I I just read some tweets about it. I don't know what what happened, but um, yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to my man Gabe there, and uh, I haven't been. When when are you going? I'm going tomorrow, allegedly. I mean, tomorrow. I, I just see oh, geez, that's soon. Crazy. Wow. Like I'm seeing like literally airport runway, like flood, like it looks like a lake. Yeah, I saw I saw a lot of stuff about that today. That's uh, well, hopefully it clears up by tomorrow for you. 
Yeah, I guess it's still, I mean, it's actually, it's even longer, right? Cause it's like a 14 hour flight. So it's like tomorrow night and then another half a day, but that's, you know, I don't, and they, they, they do the artificial clouds, right? That's the thing. They're like, they literally right, like right. do the, they are the one like pushing it when it goes wrong or when it gets a little crazy, it's like, you know, they, they actually are the ones like doing it. It's kind of, it is kind of crazy. Yeah. It's amazing what they can do these days, man. Yeah. Um, quite that's a boring. check raise block here with uh, deuces out of the small line from uh, Bowson. Where you got so you got an ace to fold? Wow, jeez, that's an interesting one. Really, really special hand. And hello, we got our first. I would say pretty big cooler. We might see a seven million chip pot here. And, oh, yeah. and again, some players when it gets three bet, four bet, they've already done this dance. We're gonna get to see a little more of a tango and a little more seriousness here. I think that. I don't know. I don't. I, these guys like big pots and they're been aggressive. We're seeing a seven million chip pot most likely, right? Oh yeah, money's going in. <laughs> Money is going in. This is big for me and you. Our dinner, our kids. If you know, they're they're they 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 should be worried about this one. This has got implications right here for the 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 chips, the whole deal. Adamo, Ace King, can't believe that his. Is he's like he's thinking, wow, are we really gonna get to get this in? Maybe I cooler him ace queen, or you know, somehow he steps out with ace five. Meanwhile, the kings are in the commanding lead. Does he ever flat or no? Too much history, right? This positions, you just gotta like let him. I think go he's gotta just rip it. It gets kind of awkward with the shorter stacks, too. So, like at this point, the pot's so big that even if he shoves and gets a fold, it's quite good for him. So I, I expect we'll see him either shove or he might do the small five bet again just because he did that exact thing the last time. So he might want to like play off of that, but I, I think he's going to put more chips in. Yeah. There's a small five, but, and I would imagine we see a shove from Adamo and then the rest goes in. This is likely going to be one of the bigger pots you'll see in the GG million. We're talking 7 million plus again, some big stacks today. And there is a decision getting down to about a minute on his clock as well. This could be a big, big moment for everyone involved. Of course, as you said, we saw Kings to care Queens to King queen suited ace King to Kings is not a, a gimme either. It's no, no guarantee. It's a good position to be in, but it's not a lock. And now Samuel realizes the severity here. 1.9. He puts it up and probably the interesting part is he knows there are some worlds where this is a bluff and a fold. So now he's, he's almost rooting for the fold versus the ASEX, right? That much money. Yeah. Well, you pick up the 1.9 versus having to put it on the line here with the over it's going to shove and it should be a quick call. Here we go at risk. Samuel Wooston. It is a 7 million chip pot here that the oh, ace there it is. arrives on the flop. Samuel needs a world of help. You can see one out, one to come, and that is maybe no justice as a deuce peels off and kings are going to get the bad, sad news of a tough beat and a knockout. Everyone excited other than Sam and Odamo came in as the overwhelming chip leader, was about to be potentially out in the shortest and fifth and now has regained the lead, the command, what he demands. He is just back to work, 7.5 million, and wow, what a moment there. Oh, Asim Mahalik is in second with five left, the payouts lower left. Everyone guaranteed 152, a lot of money here to play for. Dama snapping with the ace-10 suit, which I think makes sense given how wide his ranges are. He's going to be behind this time, but he hits a 10, and it uh, looks like he might have another elimination here very quickly. Yeah, Ace there King, Ace Ten. Oh, oh, flush for no, the Ten and the Diamond, and that is again Adamo going to work. We're down to four. Lock the doors. This is a three-handed mess of a. I mean, the chips five point four, four million, nine million, and MV who's been so quiet. One point seven million has to love it with that payout. He is now guaranteed. 194,000. He's got a lot of work to do, but that's a good result for him. People have been, you know, bobbing and diving, ducking and weaving, and he is in there with a big opportunity. And Asma Halak in second with 194 guaranteed. Korea is in the chat today going wild. And we have got oh, ourselves yeah. an interesting matchup today. We're going to give the keyword here. Ghost of M, the legend is in the chat. Get that man a sword. That is the, that when I think Twitch, I think Ghost of M, man. He is. I remember that, that name, no one's covered more ground than Ghost of M. I, I didn't, I, for a while, I didn't think he was human until we had a phone call. One of, uh, on my stream, Lee Mod, <laughs> dial, that man, I, uh, I need to, I gotta get him a paid vacation. I, I don't know. We need to get him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him out of nowhere. I haven't talked to him in a while. We just caught up. And, uh, yeah, he is, that is, that is good to see him in the chat today. Nice to see you, brother. 
Is he a human? Is he a robot or a human? Because I've talked to him, so I know he's real, but he really has covered. No one's done more hours probably on Twitch, right? Is it not close? Oh, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen that name in my chat many, many times. So uh, nice to see Ghost of M again. So nice throwback. You know, so it's, it's always cool to see people from Twitch back in the day that I used to spend all this time with, you know, see that you're still around, say hi. Yeah, Marco, good to see you, brother. Good luck to everyone who is playing. If you're grinding, watching along with us. I know we saw, I saw Casino Daddies in the chat uh, as well. I was just chat, checking with him. He's there, M. Jolson there. You guys can follow along with them, Casino Daddy streams. And actually, I, was, I actually pulled their stream up, and he's doing the stream with the video of this video, right? So he's not showing his cards. I guess they're talking through it and, like, doing it. But he's got this stream as his feed. So maybe that makes sense because they go live, right? So he's live yeah. watching this, but playing and talking about what's happening i think what he's doing so pretty cool he's given uh giving the stream some love and in there and he's got a very active very active stream he's been around forever too it is as you said it's impressive to have the the uh to keep doing right to keep going to keep keep it up because it's not easy man they you got kids you got life you got things and and, and uh, again a lot of respect and, and, and content and poker is so great now with podcasts and streams and youtube and twitch and all these different things uh, wh when you do stream do you multi-stream now or how do you when you last time you streamed do you do twitch or do you do multi-stream i was just doing twitch still yeah, um, but I'm yeah, curious you're right. The content we... in poker has really taken off lately. Like when we when we first started on Twitch, there wasn't much, and now there's just all sorts of YouTube channels and podcasts and things, and it's, it's great for uh, people to you know watch content. But it, it does make it tougher if you're a content creator to keep up with the uh, you know level of great stuff that's out there. You got to really work hard and stay on top of it and be consistent. And uh, I got a lot of respect for people who manage to keep it up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is a this is a very dirty dirty hand as the set of tens turns and i mean honestly that the check jam here it's like kind of it's it's sort of yeah i don't know how, how you know there are bluffs you're gonna call you got outs against that there you see the percentages three to one roughly a dog can he pair the board casino daddy ladies and gentlemen it looks like a three it's three. not gonna be it's gonna be a double we were just saying mv has been quiet He's sort of been lurking, and now he has asserted himself back in the mix, and he is in third with four left, and he's got 3.5 million, 80K big blind there. Upper left gives you when the blinds go up, and every 20 hands you can see level, I believe is that, say, 32 right now. So we are running, and Adamo has got the massive lead. Adamo feels like the guy that's going to just really assert super pressure in these spots, although oh, yeah. they're not that short. The players, the blinds, it's gone quick, 40, 80. Some players have chips, so let's see how much pressure he puts on and how but uh but very exciting final table it's really heated up in the last five ten minutes here it almost makes it easier to assert like a lot of pressure when people have a little bit more chips because then they can't jam on you as easily you can put pressure on across multiple it's streets and things uh great point yeah so it, uh, yeah you start getting like the 10 15 blind eight blinds like people just kind of have their ranges and they're like all right like yeah i got ace 10 suited or whatever and you know i'm the shortest but here it's like you start gotta call three bets you gotta play poker you gotta go to flops you gotta risk it all it is, uh, it is a little more pressure and more room for mistakes. Yeah, it, it can be tough to now, especially out of position post flop with these, uh, you know, massive risk premiums. Very, very difficult to navigate. You see Adama check back here with the ace nine. Yolson is going to start bluffing with his double gut shot and take it down on the turn. Yeah, also a player, one of the, the players who has not won the GG million before, I did mention that he is. Let's see, what was he won the. He won the 1.1 million GG Spring Festival main event. So pretty, pretty, pretty cool in form. And this is a very interactive flop here. Over pair, open-ended versus bottom two, backdoor flush draw. This has got the makings for some chips. They are very deep. Oh, yeah. Money should be going in here. I mean, a lot of money. Anyway, we'll see how much. Do you think he sees a clean turn calls, or do you think he gets it going right here? Uh, he probably should just call. I mean, it, it, it's... It's not exactly a spot ICM wise where you want to be flipping, and there's a lot of ways for that to happen if you do raise. Um, but on the other hand, you know you have a very good hand, so yeah, putting more money in can't I, be that bad. We'll, we'll see how I, it plays out on the turn. I really like the call. I think to Adamo having the spade, there's some other realizing that he's against a pretty strong hand here. There are some, you know, he's going to be able to maybe bluff some spades potentially. You know, like against because he he thinks this a player will not be playing a. 
a flush draw like that, right? I would I would imagine this scenario in this spot. So that's but curious now with the sevens and the shove, four or five turns a flush draw to go with the bottom two. A pretty good card for the four or five suited, right? It's not a it doesn't um, impact the four line or some kind of straight combination. There's no spade. The board doesn't you don't get counterfeited. So he does take it down and Adamo relinquishes a hand. What do you think about the shove there? I mean, yeah, it's a pretty connected board, and you you benefit greatly from just taking it down on the spot. So it's, it's quite awkward, really. All, all of it's quite awkward. Um, I think the most interesting decision is honestly pre to open the cutoff with that exact hand of the Dalmo and the big blind seems very brave to me. But uh, it worked out pretty well for him that time. See a Dalmo with a very nice hand raising. And then be in defend with a suited king in position, pretty standard, I think. Adama content to take that one down on the turn there. Yeah. Eight four suited, blind on blind here, gonna limp king four suited. Pretty good big blind hand. He is going to kick it up for 3x. 8-4 suited snap call. Everyone playing fast. Odamo is yeah, down it's interesting. to interesting. Like, Wouldn't no expect it. clock. It's not really a spot where you want to be calling too much out of position light with the presence of the shorter stack, but on the other hand, blind versus blind, you can't be too picky, I guess. The Sunaholic will take it down on the turn there. Had the best hand anyway. Yeah, so MV has 2.3 million in GG million earnings, 1 million for Aso Mahalik. Those are the two least experienced result-wise, along with M. Jolson, who again we mentioned just he has a he hit that big score, not a professional poker player, but knows his way around the poker tables and has some big scores historically in, in plays and streams on Twitch. Casino Daddy there, he's repping his moniker there. And uh yeah, I mean, again, tough, tough uh was a really tough final table. I'd say with the pedigree we have to have MV and As Asmoholic remaining, as well as M. Jolson, who, again, knows how to play. Definitely a good, very good player. But when you, we start talking about Adrian Mateus, Arthur, you got Vostin, to see this final four, you know, it says that Damo's got to be, be enjoying this this lineup and matchup and sort of shakeout. He's got a little more, I think, uh, edge, if you will, with, with the field than otherwise it would be pretty tight. I think with the ability skill-wise and sort of um you know poker understanding but hey as you said hey, you're playing a 10k it's online this is like playing a 50k live probably plus maybe like a 60k 80k something like that um and and and, and, and the equation and in a lot of respect anyone who enters or satellites even in and plays and and, and get, goes here so these guys are playing to win and uh very very exciting to watch mv go ahead and get back in the game we get, it's anyone's game right now for sure Adamo's gonna put the pressure on so he can run into some hands too that's for sure He's not he's not gonna just coast. No, he's he's uh definitely a battler, that guy. Um we have three ways to flop here. The best hand is King Nine with middle pair. Button does not have much. He's gonna see that though. Another the second time we've seen him put pressure on with these kind of like ace low hands on these sort of middle card boards. The first time worked out great for him. This time maybe not so much, although he still is in the lead slightly. Adama with live cards and a gut shot. I guess only one live card at this point. He has to hit a 10 or a jack to win the hand, and you also need to hit an ace. So MV in pretty good shape here. Wow. Checks to the river. King 10 completes a straight. Not sure if he's going to be able to get paid very easily here. He goes for a large bet, which is probably optimal in general, but in this exact spot is not likely to get a customer. Yeah, that's ace two not going to be his guy there. This board, queen nine, four, four jack, no flush possible, king 10 straight. And going to pick it up, Adamo. 
going to lean on everyone. Jolson now with 4080K, big blind, two hands that remain. So even going to go up more. It's a little bit shorter, but still playability. King 5 suited. Think of, does he want to open the cutoff? Adamo, when he does, we saw him put that three bet with ace four suited versus the short stack open and it worked. It's like that the heat, you know, M. Jolson there may want to take that spot opening his stack. He's the shortest, get it open through. But like I think you start considering Adamo and you're realizing who he's not just, oh, the guy's shorter and I'm not going to attack. When you start knowing that you're going to get played back at a lot, you know, you start start having to tighten up a bit. And that's one of the things Adamo brings to the table. He brings that aggression, that fear that, that hey, there's no easy pots, there's no easy opens, that I'm ready to put the pressure you got to be willing to play for at any time, whatever your stack is. So that's that's something that makes him very difficult to play against. Yeah, it's, it, there, you get a lot of extra money just from having that sort of aura around you at these big final tables. You know, if people just assume that you're going to fight them really hard for every inch, then they walk you more, they fold to you more. You know, all that stuff really adds up. So it's very beneficial to uh, establish yourself as that sort of player. Adama going to pass quickly that time with the queen two offsuit, a very bad hand. Blinds are up again. Yolson now the short stack with 14 big blinds. Everyone else is in pretty healthy shape. Adamo with slightly over 100 still. Yeah, shout out to shout out to Gabriel as well. And and uh, the, got got to say, man, the 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 stuff in in it's just I, I've seen some videos. I've never seen something like that. I'm talking about runways. Looks like a river, man. That is that is absolutely crazy over there. I, I didn't I didn't realize that that would they had storms like that. It's crazy. The bad timing, but maybe it'll uh, alleviate yeah, a bit more. Hopefully, maybe it works out. Yeah. Do you have Black Sheep Coffee over in, in? Are you familiar with that in the Netherlands? I know it's big in the UK. There's a pretty big chain for coffee. Have you ever heard of that? What's it called again? Black Sheep Coffee. Uh, I, I think I've heard of it, but I, I haven't actually seen it here. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a good spot. They have a their yeah. It's anyway. He he's one of some of the videos. It's. His business, Mustafa Kinet involved as well in poker. And in oh, okay, okay. Uh, I've known cool, him for a long time. Very, very cool how much they've scaled. I mean, it's they have so many stores. I think they, I think they have over there. That's why he was aware and sent me some videos from it. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot to play for here, everyone. Four left. You can see the payouts lower left. We are going to play to a winner, and we will announce. I'm going to get a giveaway going here, fifty dollar or one hundred again. Whether one of Brian's players win or one of mine, we have our own dinner bet, families included. So a healthy wager, and then we've got a fifty or hundred dollar ticket going to go your way. I'll remind us who we got. You have, uh, I have, I have a Damo. You had second and third, which are or second. You took the next that are out. I have M. Jolson. Do you have? I think I have the other two guys, right? I have a Sunaholic and uh, MV, or do you have MV? I always feel like there's a, how can I forget? We only have eight total, but I, I'm I'm actually not a hundred percent on that. We'll for the time being, we'll assume you have those two, and it's a pretty even fight. I, I think I think you have MV. I know I have a Sunaholic, and I know you have a Damo and uh, Yolson. Okay, yeah, we'll see if it comes into play, but I'm pretty sure that's right. That makes sense. The the pick wise, that that's how it went. Yeah, I think you, didn't know, you didn't know how to pronounce now, his right? name. You didn't know how to pronounce his name. Even you're like, I'll just yeah, this this M, yeah, you have MV. Okay. <laughs> I can I can try, but I don't want to butcher it. Yeah. Um both players at the same hitter. And we, we notice Adamo has run through his entire chess clock, which you've been mentioning uh for the broadcast, shot but now it's happened. Shot. He's he's out of chess clock. He's got to operate really quickly now. And he does find the four bet here. That's one thing you notice about Adamo is like a suited ace is just getting like played very hard every single time, you know, even the off suit ace X frequently getting played very hard by Adamo. Something about having that ace blocker just uh, you know, makes him go bananas in these final table spots. It worked out very well from that time as he takes it down pre with the same hand, ace two against ace two, although his was suited. Good flop for him here. He's got the top pair, sort of reverse dominated against the Sudaholic's uh, queen jack. Yep, queen 10. Going to go ahead and out flop in position and now take the lead. Continues to lead in the hand, going to bet, and queen jack two overs. Pretty out of dry board is you're going to see the 10 3 4 rainbow. See if he starts to get saucy, does not. Damo over 10 million has more chips than the remaining three players com combined. Good spot to be in. Oh, he likes it. You see him in this spot a lot in final tables, and wow. he's just relentless. Wow, oh, man, this, and this is one where you more. don't know how the player is going to respond. He's in second. You this is like a nightmare. You go for a three bet, you know, the player is capable to just to go so light with the other two stacks. And this is like, 
this is wild. This is a wild deal. I don't know if you're going to find a way out. Does he just call or do you just kind of like snap like, wow, I should have the best hand, rip it in, protect mode? Because this is a pretty big ICM uh, mess to get fourth. When yeah, is. And he does call, which potentially might be his way out, but he has a diamond. Whoa. I think he's supposed to just call the first time around to avoid this sort of thing uh, in this exact stack distribution. But, you know, it's obviously easy to say when you're, on the sidelines and now he's gotten himself in quite a pickle here we'll see if he manages to get away from it it's a pretty good board for both players they both have okay. you know very similar hands that Adamo just has a better version of it look at Adamo just recognizing he's not he's like all right you know what there's a king out there but ace king probably gonna put in i block king queen let me get value likely hands jacks tens uh, ace with the diamond something like that so he does get that big turn bet and he does extend to 14 million he now has like what almost three X or he has more than double everyone for sure. What that's two, five yep. about that, right? Double plus on the, all the stacks combined. And this is going to be the Adamo show right now. This is uh this could get wild. I might have to cue the giveaway now. Cause he might just go on a whittle everyone down. Here we go. Ace nine suited sevens. Jolson is going to get out flopped. It's a flip needs help. No seven on the turn one card to come, or we will see a knockout and beat three handed. The river is a, Slow peel deuce. That is GG for M. Jolson, Casino Daddy, Matthias. Again, great guy, great player. Casino streamer, but also poker player. Also been on my podcast. Shout out to you, brother. Good, good catching up, man. Hope to see you again soon at these final tables and get to connect. And uh, again, great, great showing over there as he will take fourth place. Almost 200,000. Very healthy score. Three left. Let's cue the giveaway. It's going to be GG Poker Space Brian. Actually, let's do B Paris. Put, put the B Paris and then the insert GG poker username. And that will be 50 or a hundred dollars. GG Massey. That's right. GG. Oh, we have another one here. We have another knockout. Oh my goodness. That there is ace ten. Like flies, man. You better hurry. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. That's a turn. The good news is if we get heads out. up here, it's going to be quite deep stack. So it might Three. last a bit. Out one to come, ace ten. It is a three across the three diamond turn eight. It's a three across. It is a knockout. We are heads up. We are off in an hour and a half. Heads up. This is a very quick work final table. Thought it might be a little bit longer with the stacks and the more money and more chips. We saw a lot of four million chip stacks, but hey, cards happen. Ace king to kings happen. Stuff goes on. It's a tournament. There's your third place, two hundred forty-seven thousand. We are playing for eighty-seven thousand dollars. No deal making at the final table. We are going to get to a winner here quickly in a Selma Hawk. The Korean chat. They're out in in waves. They know their their man is playing for a big match. Three hundred fifteen k locked up. Very exciting to watch there it is uh keyword above fifty dollars or a hundred dollar ticket good luck good luck also the tweet is gonna be i'm gonna just double put that out here so that is a fifty dollar right tweet and that is There we go. Oh All right, we got goodness. two giveaways going. King 10, Ace King. And I mean, Ace King. He's got no time bank, too. He's got to decide in five seconds. Wow. Wow. Adamo. Adamo. He's going to call. He's in a world of hurt. They, he's, oh got him. he's got his man like to a three hour one something. to come. This could be crazy if it can hold. Oh, and nine. It's not enough for Adamo. It's a double. Us and Mahalik is oh. our chip leader. And this is crazy, Brian. I mean, this is crazy stuff. Now he's a two to one lead. Korean. Fans, the Korean is in the chat. I believe again, he's got the Japanese flag. I believe he's Korean. Was told he's Korean. A lot of Koreans in the chat going going crazy. I can't. I don't speak Korean. I speak a little Portuguese. I don't know if you speak any Korean, but I think they're excited because he is heads like up Korean. for they, they a four hundred k score with the lead versus the legend of the game, trying to assert himself as a legend of the game. Already doing so with the three hundred fifteen k score, but it's a little more you we, you know brian you've had a lot of seconds in your career you've had a lot of first but the second is just different no matter the money it's always nice yeah. to get that actual cherry the money the, the glory you go to sleep a little cleaner when you win so let's see if he can finish it off here against a very difficult adamo well it's, it's more of a fair really fight right? right because adamo has no time bank so it's like the experience edge is going to be uh kind of offset by not having a time bank so I think that I think that wrinkle really makes this extra interesting here. Because you know, if he can put a Domo in these really ridiculous spots and he has five seconds to decide what to do, uh, it, you know, it makes it tough. 
Yeah, again, fairly deep, right? Seven, 70 bigs effective, a little more with 7 million to 13. But again, Adamo loves to thread the needle. He loves to put pressure. Look at this. 5-8 off. I mean, Brian, I'm not, I'm a little surprised here at this. Like, decide to just put up pressure and look, 5-8 eight off on this board. He might you see bet. You're going to get some uh, – not much you can do if you're a Damo. Let's see if he hit with the back doors, if he holds on. It seems like they're deep, but this would be a bit, bit courageous. I think so, yeah. It's, I, I guess he's three-betting light to take advantage of the lack of time bank would be my guess. It's just, you know – Adamo's going to have a lot of uh, very marginal hands facing that three bet. But the thing is, Adamo has also studied these ranges inside and out. So I'm sure he'll be able to make his at least pre flop decisions pretty consistently. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would not want to have to play for this much money with no time make. That sounds extremely stressful. So Sunaholic has bottom pair. Dalmo with not much, just jack high. He is in a bluff. Not big enough to force off bottom pair. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, ace-queen suited, jack deuce suited now. Let's see if there'll be some limping or raising. He's going to be raising. He still has 60 blinds, right? This isn't 20, 30 blind, yep. 15 blind poker. And this time, another three back comes in. Jack deuce suited. It's, it's you know, it's you start getting close. You're deep, but it's like, it's not a great great one to be peeling although he does go and do that and ace queen suited gonna miss gonna come right out betting and jack do suited again doesn't have the spades doesn't have backdoor doesn't hit a pair gonna get out of the way and good start for Ross Mahalik, of course getting the full double and now making a little bit of a dent even more three to one lead currently Osmohalik. And again, very uh, nice experience he's having here coming into this final table, you know, correctly calling Adamo on this bluff. And now he's heads up with a huge lead. Uh, got a chat full of his countrymen cheering him on. It's a, it's a dream scenario for a student hall. Like, we'll see if he can finish the job here. It's not, not an easy spot, though. Adamo is a tough customer. No matter how big of a lead you have and no matter how little time bank he has, he is not going to go down without a fight. And great check raise there at the 9-10. I mean, of course, we see the cards, and it works, and he's got the gut shot. You know, I, I like it. Puts the pressure on, gets it done. 10 now to do six suited. Right so far, things really going his way. And this is, I mean, you could just, you, you can't script it right now. Top set versus a flush draw in a good spot here. If Adamo decides to get saucy with the flush draw, just calls, makes sense. He's got no overs just to do six. He does pick up a straight draw now, and a big bet here would serve a Sumaholic well considering the hand holding, and he does find it. And Adamo, I mean, he's got equity for sure in his mind. Let's see. I don't see how he could get away here, right? He's got the straight draw, flush draw. He does, though. Maybe too much, and figuring the eight might not be good. It's a six-high flush draw. Okay, that makes sense, but wow. Well, Tough out of position, been yeah. Right there. Tough out of position. But, yeah, Adamo, I mean, you got to make these decisions so quickly. It's, it's not easy to get them right. At uh, that time, he did get it right, but... You know, it's five seconds is not a lot of time to be making these heads up decisions. Honestly, Asma Hollick's playing lights out right now, just putting full aggression on, gets the light three bets in, gets good boards to continue, take it down. It's kind of just been working for him right now. Adamo's not used to this. He's got heads up chip lead into kind of put with his back to the wall here, where he is all of a sudden just not really one to pot in this match. And he's in a big world of hurt and still 40 blinds. though. I think he needs to sit back, calm himself down. Not that he's, he's been here before and he knows he's got a lot of big blinds. He can definitely turn this around, get in the mix. And here he goes. He turns a nine. He's got a kind of critical pot at this point does have the winner. If he's able to get to a showdown currently pretty good turn for him. He is going to check. See if I'll Interesting flop it. call with the uh, ACE three, no sort of back doors or anything. That's a little bit loose. He was ahead on the flop, but he is not going to be ahead going into the river. But yeah, to go back to what you were saying about Adamo, it's it's it is. I mean, obviously he's been here before a billion times, so he knows what to do. But when you start off a heads up and you just get beat up hand after hand after hand, it's really important to take a step back and kind of center yourself and focus and you know remind yourself you still have a lot of chips to work with. What? And Adamo being put into yet another difficult spot with his five second time bank. Wow. And the ace three wow. got the job done there. And I think Asuna Holic is, but it, my guess is that he's looking at the lack of time bank from Adamo and he's deciding to just, you know, put him in as many tough spots as possible. Um, and, and so Jack far it's nine. worked for him. We'll see how it Jack works from nine. here on. 
you would see maybe check back, right? Decent hand to check back on a limp, but he does put the pressure on. He finds Adamo at the, the ugly part of the range and folds and just picks up another. Here he is out chipped, and this is where things could go wrong. No, I'm sorry, out kicked, and now he is going to come out leading, and King 10 has a pretty good spot here to win a lot of chips as as a, in the moment, especially gets the check raise in against top pair. Don't see how Muslim Mahalik can get out of the way, and it gets a little That's scary. Top turn. It's a, it's a tough turn. All the all the draws improved. It's still a top pair heads up against Adamo, so it's not going to be easy to get rid of it, but that is a uh, scary turn. He does find a fold. I mean, that turn you said, you mentioned, it does complete various hands, straights, flushes. He decides that that was enough to get out of the way, and a little unlucky for Adamo, right? A, deuce, uh, a lot of yeah, turns definitely. are going to keep him interested, and there he did get kind of bailed out where he did not double up the his opponent and again four to one lead 16 million to four million damo gonna pick that up and a little more norm normality some back and forth pots not just every hand going to osmoholic yeah it's uh you know you get off to a good start against someone like adamo but you gotta finish the job and it's it's easier said than done you know you gotta stay focused he takes it down there with two six also so he is really being very relentless um with the aggression here Yeah, eights and king ten suited, and this could be a big pot. This could be it. This could be a double. This could be a lot of things. King ten suited is going to peel. Eights get a very favorable flop. Nine seven three rainbow going to come out firing, and you know Damo with the king ten suited. The 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 back doors, the back door flush, back door straight. Two overs is appealing. And at the yep. same token, it can't get too sticky as he does, and he's gonna maybe call it off now. With uh, and not what you want to do is call it off, but it is a a spot where you got the two overs, a straight draw, the king high flush draw, and he's getting kind of bulldozed yep. in the moment. And this is, it is. It. we are playing for a it tournament is. champion right here, Osmo Holic the River. Drum roll, ladies and gentlemen, it it's is. A game. A he is going to come back in the game. It was too storybook. Was he really just going to run over Adamo? Now he's got a dogfight on his hands at 6120. Adamo kind of maybe reasserting, Ooh. reassessing the situation, and they got a whole new ball game. That would have been a wild finish, but we are going to play some more poker. That is rough for a pseudoholic, you know, to go from, you know, running him over like that, and now you got to play a real heads-up match against, you know, arguably the best player in the world, if not the best and one of the best. Um, you know, it's it's a tall order, but we'll see where it goes from here. So Adamo picking up sixes, taking it down. Yeah, that was a lot of outs. I mean, Adamo didn't have much longer to think about it. And I think, again, a lot of equity there. But that's not what he's used to. Calling off one to come, drawing. That's not the... Yeah, usually he's on the other end of the spectrum there, The putting on the aggression. You can see the aggression here. Jack 2 suit with a nice three bet takes it down. Yep. All right, let's play some poker. We have got ourselves a nice, Speed nice, poker. nice final table today, capped off with the great match, and it, that seems fitting. We need a little battle, 11 to 9 million. It's been quick so far. We're hour yeah, 45. It's been a fast final time. table. It's nice to see a heads-up battle that's longer than, you know, three hands or whatever. Yeah, appreciate everyone hitting the heads up. Or, I'm sorry, we are heads up. I appreciate everyone hitting the thumbs up. We are heads up, and that is part of the giveaway. You can type in the, the keyword there, GG Poker, Space Brian, Space your GG Poker username, if you're in a jurisdiction with no GG Poker available, you probably have a friend that plays poker that is able to play. Put their username, gift them, sweat them, split it with them, do something, put their in there, enter the giveaway, good luck, and hit that thumbs up. That is the, the second part of the giveaway along with your entering of that information. So good luck to you guys. And on Twitter, of course, pin tweet, Jeff Bros Poker, $50 cash giveaway. We'll be doing that as well today. And Brian and I are playing for a family dinner of a lot. I guess I got High a little... for us. Got, you got how old's the baby? Uh, one and a half. All right, so you got that's got a little. I got a little EV on the bet. I mean, I, I got two kids. You got three, but it's, yeah, you know, the youngest yeah. one doesn't eat that much, so it's, it's close. But you got a little EV on it for sure. You also have uh, you know one of the most accomplished players in the world. I have a slight chip lead, and you know, Asuna Hollock's done well so far. But at this point, I think I like your side. Now that Adama has made it close, we'll see how this hand pans out. He calls the flop check raise with the same hand again, King Ten of Spades, Overs, Backdoor Flush Draw. Turn's going to be a little dicier for him, though. Still getting a very good price, but now he's uh, not going to be ahead of that much. Yeah. Walking the gut shots, he would be hoping to be ahead of there, I think. Yep. Yeah, Queen Seven, Deuce Three. Not so nice hands. That's a computer hand. Heads up, queen seven off. Yeah, the classic, the computer hand. 
They used to play. You're a fellow, a fellow old head. You know all these old terms, like from way yeah, back in the day. an old school term, probably like uh, <laughs> super system. And Asuna Hola calling the flop here with the uh, king eight. I, I mean, you do have to call king eyes on this type of board, but he doesn't have a spade. It's it's a little dicey. Maybe a close sort of call. Adamo checks a turn. Adamo's still in the lead here, so he's going to win, I would imagine. See if he bets again or just decides to check. He does bet again and gets a quick call from just King High. So Asuna Holic trying to catch Adamo bluffing, but Adamo instead extracting max value with his middle pair. Very well played hand by him there. So one and a half X sizing, or two and a half X sizing, excuse me, from Asuna Holic makes these uh, Jack Seven type hands. A little more marginal. Adamo opts a three bet with it. Asuna Holic with a quick call, and Adamo is in the lead here on the flop with middle pair. He also has a backdoor club draw. Great turn for Adamo now. He's way ahead. Yep. Jack seven has a club too. I mean, this is, yeah, pretty textbook spot for him. He's going to feel good about it. I mean, again, it's always with the whole cards. We see it, we know, but that is definitely. Board pair, you have a seven. Hard to make a pair heads up. You get check raised, though. My man is going for it. He is absolutely yeah, he's going, hard. going for it. Continuing his strategy of trying to just put Adamo in, like, weird, difficult spots. Doesn't work this time. We'll see if he follows through on the river. Might work I mean, if he does that. It's pot SPR very close to one. Also, it is four. It would be for all the chips, right? 6.479, 6.54. Is he just going to rip it? Or is he just getting oh, Okay. That was... No. He went, that was, that would have been, that would have been, that would have not been expected. I mean, that, the, the, the big bet there would have been something, but now the tables have turned Adamo back in the lead. Ace 10, four, nine, lot to play for. So he does limp his weakest range. Ace 10 going to shoot it up three X. Yeah, but he's got both limps and raises even this deep. Uh, you know, someone like Adamo is going to have spent a lot of time looking at the heads up strategies and charts and things. And he knows, he knows his way around this situation. He's been here many times. Calling there with the ten six zero for the two and a half x, um, you know, not not the best hand. It's probably right on the bottom end of what you're calling with. I would imagine. Wind up folding the flop, and the blinds are up again to one hundred and forty thousand. This is a pretty good hand for both players. Pocket pair versus a suited ace. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Asim Mahalik is doing a lot of three betting, so he does flat. Interesting, does flat and uh, deuces for that Pretty price. Flop for both players, really. Yeah, yeah, not terrible. Yeah, deuces. I mean, I think Asim Mahalik is uh, inflating the variance here, which is what you want to do if you're up against like a really good player. You want you want to like make it as high variance as possible, basically. Um, you know, if you play like a, a ton of small pots, you're more likely to have lose edge, I think, against someone like Adama. So it makes sense to try to really blow the variance up in a spot like this. Check, check on the turn after a very small bet on the flop. We'll see if Asuna Holic tries to value bet the river or if he tries to bluff catch. He does go for a one third pot value bet. Adamo, I expect we will not see a call from him. He does find the fold. Back and forth heads up battle. We are seeing some fast and furious action here, folks. This is not a uh, you know a boring heads up with a bunch of small pots or a lot of light three betting. Adamo light three betting again with this hand, but gonna run into a nice one here. And Ace King yeah. just shoving, not going to play the uh, the small four bet that time. Yeah, no click wars. I think against someone like Adama, you want to try to induce by small formatting but obviously with ace king offsuit specifically it's always tempting to just you know put the money in and kind of force your opponent into a bad spot either way neither play with much here ace five is ahead but he's going to overbet turn it into a bluff worked out for him So Adamo's in three betting a lot of garbage hands. This time he gets ace 10. Very strong hand heads up. Three bets with that. Takes it down. And seven, seven suited. suited. 
this has got the potential for the pot, right? There's some there's some flops here, draws or some yeah, kind I think of, you got a call. top pair draw, but pretty pretty uh pretty air ball for Osmaholic, although maybe he fires a couple shells and seven eight suited depending on the turn. Certainly not gonna fold here. And Ooh. a big moment there. The ace is a nice card for Osmaholic. No. That's not a great turn. We'll see if he finds another call. He does have position. Yeah, but, also uh, two high cards on the board is tough. Yeah, Domino he correctly really getting away call, from that but... one. Yeah, the ace specifically is a tough card. I mean, obviously the ace is going to be the most common sort of thing in your opponent's hand when you get three bet pre, so it's you know usually reasonable to give them credit for an ace. Both players with trash here, and this is kind of the essence of heads up is how you play these trashy hands like. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to find a way to play all these really garbagey hands, and that's really what makes heads up so challenging. Adama with the not quite the literal nut low here, but uh, pretty close. So we may see him bluff. Snapped off with the seven flush paired board, seven high flush, pretty reasonable call there. Small look now with a two to one lead. Yeah, he's building it back up, and uh, you know he's putting up a very good fight against an excellent player here. So this has been fun to watch so far. And like I said, you know, no shortage of action, a lot of light three betting. Uh, you know, nobody's being shy here. We're seeing a slugfest. He has really done well with uh, the the attacking the limp too. He's had some good timing with his air ball hands against Adamo's sort of trash limps, and then getting folds even just for the three x as he is in another spot where he has a pair versus top pair and in position damo certainly making a pair and heads up going to be continuing it's not folding for one but he may fold for multiples we'll see the turn to lead. lead the turn Interesting. Very small turn lead from Adama there. Um, quite an interesting uh, play to have in your arsenal. I know, I know that leading the turn when the middle card pairs is common. And heads up is a little different because the ranges are kind of closer together. But the very small sizing there from Adama on the turn is very interesting turn lead. I like it. Now a small bet from Asuna Holic on the river. We'll see if Adama pays this off or if he finds the fold. He does find the fold. Getting something like five to one, but just not going to be winning there. So a disciplined lay down. Yeah, hold them yes. so hard to make pairs. I mean, we just get heads up. You get a really quick illustration of that where you get to see each hand. And it's like, all right, queen high, nine, ten high. Like no, even no draws on a lot of times in hold them. So that it just shows you how hard it is to make a pair. It's a tough game, man. Heads up, especially like you'll, you'll get beat up a cut in a few small and medium pots, and the next hand you get dealt queen two offsuit, and you're like, "Well, if I just got to come in for a raise again, this is how it works." You know, it's it's uh, there's no breaks. You gotta just find a way to keep going, no matter how it's going for you. That's that's half the battle. Heads up is you know keeping it together. Whoa. Ooh, a big Whoa. one here, folks. Whoa, this, this might be the be, end. You might, we're gonna see five most likely. How can you not ace king, ace queen suited? These are massive hands. Heads up, and Asmohalik gonna love to shove it. He's gonna get snapped out of his pants. He's gonna be the favorite. He does three bet, not shove, but this is gonna go in, guys. You are watching the all in moment ace king, ace queen suited classic, huge cooler. You could have a new champion right here. Asmohalik is ahead to the flop, clean. Turn is My clean. Guys win. To fade a Maybe. queen and a queen only, or you will have a GG million new champion. Oh, oh. I just, you don't want to believe it. You don't <laughs> actually want to believe that that can happen. Oh my Adama. goodness! World class. I almost re knocked over my computer tower there on, on it. I couldn't actually believe it. That is the drama. That's so it sick, is man. So wild. So the wild. underdog. He's been not, he's been battling so well, and then that happens. That's sick. Wow, and Asma Hawk though puts the aggression on right in and he flops top top and Queen Six gonna fall. So it's we are gonna battle. That is a wild run out. Put that in your highlight pipe and smoke it. That is a absolute classic for the win though. You could feel it 85, 87 thousand. Yeah, all you had to do is fade one more card. <laughs> oh my goodness. That I mean, he would have wrapped up a win against like one of the best MTT players in the world on, you know, one of his 
Yeah, man, that's sick. Well, I'm gonna, I got to the- announce the winner of the giveaway too. That could have been over. I got. I'm gonna pick it here in a second. Still not too late. Hit the thumbs up. Type in GG Poker Space B Paris Space. Your GG Poker username or friends, if you don't have one, good luck. And the pin tweet. Let's see how many people on Twitter. Brian, did you get the retweet out? You're, if you win it, I'm going to double it down. All right, I'm, 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 uh, I'm out there now. I'm retweeting it. All right, $50. A little EV. There's about 50. We got a one in, you know, 2% chance. Not bad. So far. Going to get that in there. And Ace 5 7 by this guy, Asimoholic. I mean, I have to root for the underdog. Korea is representing in the chat today. A lot of Korean and... That is absolute a wild deal. Zero seconds on the clock for Adamo. Asmaholic pushing up the variance. He's got plenty of time on his clock. And that is a mildly wild moment. We've seen it all. But that you just, you know, you just don't want to believe you don't want the underdog to take that type of that type of uh adversity, that type of that type of, of heartache. And he's got a winner if he can hold on here. Hard to do. Bottom pair, king queen, two overs, flush draw, a lot of potential here for Adamo likely going to keep on shelling it was almost a perfect story for him you know he made that sick hero call early on in the final table with you know seven left or whatever with just ace 10 and and he was about to beat the champ heads up and it was all just had to fade a queen but now he's back in the trenches fighting for his life again and it's you know it's just how it goes man tournaments are rough merciless Adamo season one seven final tables three titles season two Seven final tables, two titles. Current season, three final tables, one title. So he has got, what is that, seven? Is that seven? No, five, six. So he's going for his seventh GG Million title. We mentioned Arthur with eight. Pretty pretty wild stuff. This would be the first for us. It's Austin. insane, man, how much skill there is in this game. You know, it's been playing it for years, and it's just crazy how good these guys are and how, how many spots they find that I wouldn't and how much more there is to learn. It's just, it's just fascinating stuff. So almost exactly even stacks now. We're getting really uh, quite a back and forth battle in this heads up match. Damo top pair, Asunaholic bottom pair. I assume he'll be betting some amount on the turn here, but we'll see. Whoa. Ooh. Spice. That what is the river. jungle man spice. He loves that word. That is a spicy river in the top hair. A lot of stuff misses. He does have top hair. It is going to probably go for a oh, while. Wow. So this is interesting on that. How gets called, of course, at least called. He didn't think about raising. This call, huh? Yeah, I would have at least considered raising. I guess he figured there wasn't that much value in it. But, you know, he's, he's got the time bank. You know, Adama's the one who's got to act quickly. But I, I, now... I, I might have wound up just calling as well. But I think it would have warranted yeah. at least a moment of consideration. Back in the lead, almost a two to one lead. Asmaholic, man. What a welcome river that was. Jack Queen here with the spade. Gonna check in the lead versus the Queen Deuce off. See if Asmaholic starts going for it. Probably not such a likely yes. hand. He is gonna go and stab at this. He's kind of just max aggression in a lot of these spots, you know, and it's it's there's kind of an interesting metagame thing going on where after 30 minutes, I mean, presumably. Adamo's got this open on the side, right? So he'll he'll see the way that the student hall is playing some of these hands after a 30 minute delay. Um, so if the heads up goes longer than 30 minutes, he can start seeing how aggressive he's being in some of these spots and maybe adjusting to that. Um, but he'll take that down with the queen jack high on the river. So now neither player with much of anything. A student hall has a you know backdoor flush draw, but. Might be good enough. Yeah. I mean, this this is this has been a really exciting this has been a special final table. I say I've done a lot. Just the just the pedigree of the players, four hundred K plus prize pool. We've seen great bluffs, seen get there's we've had a wild finishes, wild river cards. This easily could have been over a few times, and here we are, heads up, pretty even. And we are going to play to a winner here. And the audience has been special. Over 150, you hit the thumbs up. We got 1,500 on for the whole time. Really good audience engagement. We got giveaways. And that is a, this is just, this has just been a full treat. Be Paris, legend of the game here today. It's late over there in Europe. He's with us calling it out. Almost had a short day. We're coming on the two-hour mark right now. 
This is, this is a good, honestly, a good educational opportunity as well. You know, I mean, I, I have the opportunity to watch this every week, but to do a commentary on it and kind of think really deeply about some of the spots, like watching the way these guys approach these spots, it'll teach you more than uh, a lot of other things. It's just a great way to learn. And the ace four going, oh my goodness. Ooh. Wow. Wow. He might call. Wow. 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 He got one there. wow. I mean, that, that is a such a special play. hand. This looks like a, just a trivial chop over bet and then ship potle. Tacos yeah, and he got him. That is a full on, just absolute crazy play. My man, Asuma Hawk. If that, that is, you this this that guy needs sick. a poster. That was a poster hand right there. That is a, I hope, I mean, I already used, talked about, put it in your highlight pipe, but that is a, that is a, that is a grown man shove right there that's a real play that's right that's a good there. one man wow. yeah it's not every day that adamo gets owned like that but yeah he got he got wrecked on that hand that was a that was a nice play by a and those those boards with, that are like very likely chops you're really interesting you know a lot a lot of the best players will play them like extremely aggressively and you saw that there and it's uh you know it's a spot where maybe if, if you're playing poker and you just want to check there and keep it simple maybe you're missing something because there's there's a lot more to depth to those spots that might meet the eye at first Adamo now with three of a kind, but it's a pretty scary board for pocket five, so I'm not sure how much he's going to make here. Awesome oh, Hawk's been a little bit happy on calls. This board, though, looks yes. I mean, there's there's flushes, there's aces, yeah. there's jacks, there's queens. I guess he figures a jack doesn't bet. Maybe not in ace, but that is uh, – he's just when he looks like he's about to run away with it and close it out. It's two to one again, less than two to one, so – this is it. This is just a. This is just a full on. Everyone's getting a little bit of excitement here, both ways. It's too yeah. close to call. I mean, at the moment, Adamo is out chipped and no time bank. But Asuma Hawk's been playing very, very savvy, very, very much, very oh, yeah. aggressive, playing to win. And he's swinging away, man. It's uh, this is, there's happened hardly, hardly any boring pots. Every pot is at least you know. Three three bet light or multi barrel. There's there's a lot going on here, and he's value betting pretty thin here. Didn't really matter what he did in that case. I guess maybe he could have induced a bluff by checking, but wins the pot regardless. Asunaholic now about a two to one lead over the very uh, accomplished and renowned Michael Adamo. It's been a hell of a match here, folks. So top pair versus bottom pair again. I expect we'll see a call. Asuna Hollick turns two pair. Adamo now has a gut shot to go with his third pair. Yeah, doesn't have a club. Does have a pair with a gut shot. Possibility to improve, but that is... Oh, my goodness. There it is. He got there on the river. Yeah, I was thinking the lack of club might sink him on the turn there, but, you know, heads up, you got to find a way to continue with a lot of hands. So we'll see if he finds a lead here, if he's just going to check. He does find a lead, a pretty big lead, too. I was thinking maybe small lead, but perhaps he's trying to get paid by some of those light calls. Asuna Hollick finding the fold this time, correctly so. A disciplined fold there by Asuna Hollick after a lot of uh, light calls in other spots. Shout out to Benny e over there in the UK joining in for a big, exciting match here. This is a, this has been one of my, I, I, I hate, I don't like saying that because I genuinely say, I feel like I, I do say it a lot, but it's true. Like this, this is up there in the memorable final tables for so many reasons, but we have, uh, we've seen a lot of excitement today and this is too close to call Omaha now tightens it up 9 million to 11 million. And it is really anyone's game. No shot clock noticeable for Adamo. And the blinds are now getting back into like the normal sort of reasonability of where we're at on general GG million time wise. Like we're getting in the over two hour mark. It's not a quick one. It's not slow, but we were, we were about an hour and a half in. It could have been over hour and 45 where it was, where it was a card away. The eight, the three outer one to yeah, come was right. pretty, pretty spectacularly shocking. I mean, that, that was reason to, uh, to gasp for sure. 
Well, I mean, two hands into the heads up, they were all in with top pair versus top pair. It's just that the, the bigger stack had the worst kicker. Otherwise, we could have had this match over very quickly. But it's yeah. been a very fun back and forth with a lot of twists and turns. I see Adama's going to ultimately take down a uh, small to medium pot here with the 4-3. Yep. Yeah, this is, uh, this has been, this is, this is, I mean, you honestly can't, get closer now right the the stack size are right there here's another just a lot of limp folds from Adamo. he's had a lot of really bottom percentage hands I'd be curious what he does with some some different holdings and and how how it would play but this has been osmaholic really putting on pressure king jack off in the three bet range probably heads up for Adamo, considering how aggressive to osmaholic is and just in general a strong holding for heads up play and we do see a three bet there. Yeah, when we see Adama start getting dealt a little bit better of hands, we might see uh, even more fireworks than we've already seen. Like you said, he's had pretty weak hands on average so far in this heads up match. Yeah, and then when he did get ace queen suited, he was against ace king. I mean, also he had top pair king 10 versus ace king. That was how he got kicked off here as the nine of five. This is looks like a lot for Adama. What does he got here? He's uh, double gut. Is it a queen open ended? I guess eight, it's open ended. Jack. Yeah. So he might he might fire another barrel here. It's it's an interesting spot to put on a lot of pressure with like the straight draw. He got there. And now a student holic uh, is going to be in kind of some trouble here. We'll see if he pays off anything or if he manages to get away from it. It's a pretty dicey board. Yeah, I mean there are. Oh, he goes for the over bet. And he's been very sticky. He has top pair. You can start talking to yourself. You don't have a diamond. You know, wow. does he really have a nine? He's repping sort of a nine X. That this is a big happen. size, though. Adamo really wants to get paid off big here. Sensing that, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of hero calling has been going on and, you know, playing off his image. I like the sizing. It might work for him. The nine X, too. It's just kind of like, how does he have a nine? He's in there with air ball against top pair. Gets the runner, runner, eight, seven. And, yeah, based on Austin Mahalik's tendencies, I could see him. He's also he did fold two pair to a to the to the to the three five off. He does pay at this time. He would have been right both times if he folded. He, he folded. Just you don't want to believe Adamo can make hands like this. He does it. And now he is a three to one plus almost four to one chip lead. And 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 Asimahalik, man, he's had a. I don't want to say he's had lives because because to be fair, he had Adamo all in three out or ace king ace queen to win it. But you know, it's like there's only so much flip flopping we're gonna see. At some point, at some point, something's got to give here, and someone's going to win. But we are going to, we do need to announce the the winner. We're going to have to announce a winner for the giveaway. Give you guys another couple couple moments here to hit the thumbs up, and also type in G, GG Poker Space B Paris Space your GG Poker username. 163 so far in the tweet. Again, last time I'll mention it. Jeff Gross Poker pin tweet. I'll drop the link in, and give you guys a chance of that fifty dollars in cash. Yeah, this thing might be over any minute now, uh, the way it's been playing out, so we better get that thing underway. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the the winner here here in about one minute announce it. Give you guys a second. Well, I gotta be rooting for the Asuna Hall at comeback here, or else I'm gonna owe you a very large dinner. Yeah. Jack five gets paid. I'm sorry, Jack Five wins. He picked off a bluff there, bluff. so it worked out for him. So he's making a little comeback here. Adama still with roughly a two to one lead, though. They come in raising with the four seven. So you know, like defends the queen ten. No help for either player. Very disconnected flop. Adama using a small sizing. Getting raised. The Sudaholic was well ahead to just call, but he did raise, took it down. And do you see that aggression continue from a Sudaholic? I think it's a very good baseline strategy. If you go into heads up with, against someone as good as Adamo and you see that they have no time bank, I think that just trying to, you know, be as aggressive as possible in every spot that would be tough, I think is a very good, like, default baseline starting strategy. Yeah, Adamo here with the six on this board does check. 10 7, gonna check. Ooh, a Sudaholic checking twice and getting in trouble here. Yeah, this is where it goes awry, right? We over bet maybe here. And you get, he figures he has some showdown, goes for a massive Ooh. over bet. Wow. Really? That is, a, that's a chonker right there, man. Jeez. So that's the thing about Adamo is he has these 
sizes in his arsenal. And then if you're a pseudoholic, you know, you got second pair, you've underrepresented your hand, you've checked twice, you have to meet certain, you know, minimum defense frequencies here. I don't know if this hand qualifies, but yeah. Like a 4X pot. I mean, that is, that is savage play. And honestly, I think that really is sort of like really recognizing that, that, a Sumaholic goes for sort of bluffs, random bluffs, and doesn't best when he checks. I think he just realized, wow, he really has like a 10 or some sort of value in, and he just says, you know what, I'm gonna go for that full, full, full send on that. And that is a that is a world class, world class bet. That's great. That's why Adamo's where he is. You know, he's a brilliant player and he's got those in his arsenal and he'll bluff there too. You know, he'll he'll find the four X pot bluffs too. And it's really freaking hard to play against someone like that at a big final table with massive pay jumps like this. And here he goes again. Trips on the river. Again, it's against a not going to matter much because it's a bluff, but just gets to go ahead and shoot it up on the bottom pair. And now he has, uh, well, I mean, actually, it is the ace out there. It's not like a mandatory raise, but he does. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a close spot for him. He decided to raise to quite a big size, and I guess trying to take advantage of the uh, sort of calling station uh, tendencies he's seen in this match. But um, yeah, not, not a given by any means. Didn't find the customer. It's not over yet. It's getting close to it though, and it's it's just wild, man. Like Asumaholic, this guy. We're talking. What I say that gonna be could be the seventh win for the GG Millions. You got a guy come in here. He's one card away. Six point seven percent has to fade. One to come to be the champion. Seventy two K. And again, not over, but now a pretty big deficit. And Adama, who started as your chip leader, is your massive leader. Heads up, and it's just kind of crazy. He got an ace king. The kings don't forget versus Wooston. Samuel Wooston, yep. European, and it did hit the ace as well. So he would have been out in fifth, I believe. At the, or, or he would have had 500K left, five left. And now he's chip leader with a massive lead, looking to close it all out. He's run good, but, you know, you got to run good at final tables. You also got to play well and navigate a lot of tough spots. And he's managed to do it with no time bank, which is, you know, doubly impressive, really. That is your winner, and it is going to be, I don't know if he's here. But we'll we'll get it to him anyway. Jimmy Lamb, congrats! That is going to be a fifty or one hundred dollar winner. And what it would be, Adamo is my guy, right? So a hundred. Yeah, it's looking likely a hundred, but no, it's not. It's not over yet. Jack Deuce, is there could be some frustration? Is could there be some kind of heroic, crazy bluff here? But Jack Deuce. He's got one of the words. He does yeah, do he's it. Just, he's just kind of had enough. Like, he's like, screw it. I'm all in. And man. if Adamo finds a call here, I'd be very impressed. He might just sense that his opponent is on, you know, kind of, this would be a very fitting way. No, he didn't do it, but that would have been a really cool way to end the tournament to make that call there, you know. And the student hall, like, I, I, again, I think continuing the strategy of just your opponent has five seconds on the bank. You're just going to put him in as many ridiculous bluff spots as you can and hope for the best. And, you know, that's it's been working out. For the most part. Adamo with a very weak hand here. Sunaholic has picked up a gut shot to go with his king high. A couple of people referencing they said they've won a few weeks ago tickets. So what happens just to clarify when the, the winners from GG, when the ticket comes, they get submitted to a sheet and then they get credited. So could take a week or two, usually not three. I'll check on you, Musa, and anyone else if that ever happens. That's, again, part of giveaways, free rolls. There are hiccups. It doesn't, it's not me awarding it. I pass the info on and it gets updated. So make sure you are going to get that. But at the moment, we will award the winner. I just told you, Jimmy Lamb, humble victory. And we will see today. There it is. That's actually a spot where. Nice to miss because Jack 10. Wow. Jack 10 peels. Jack 10 leading. Jack 10 picks up equity. Does Asuma Holic when he gets called with no equity bluff does slow down. And now Adamo also maybe noticing there's some let's give up turns. And he does he's out fire. He happens to have the best hand, but probably won't. Maybe just goes for a huge bet here, right? When it's check. Wow. Check. Interesting. Wow. That's a wild hand. I mean, I'm sure calls. And I guess, yeah, I guess you do beat. Maybe just. And Jack high is not nothing there, you know, because if you bluff, you're trying to fold out basically ace high. Um, and, you know, it's it, you're targeting almost exactly ace high if you bluff there because I don't know if you're going to get a fold from the pairs, right? So it's it's it, Jack high has more value in that spot heads up than it may first appear like showdown value.
five nine jack eights pair some decent turns i mean awesome mahalik is getting into dangerous territory here of we'll stack up the straight draw so if he can you know return the favor on what adala did to him earlier he might have a chance here adama also picked up a gut shot though so he is in a bet again I expect Adamo will not be folding. Now the river could be quite interesting if uh, Suda Hawk were to follow through with a third barrel. Could he block? Oh, I was thinking he might block her bet here too, but no, he does. I guess that he's induced. That's been. Let's see. Does he follow it through? He does follow it through. And Jack Eight. This might not be a fold. Adamo. I mean, looking at the board, blocks Jack Queen, but he doesn't have a spade. He's got a pair of eights. That yeah, he does call. There is. Oh, there, there it is. There it is. Seven-time winner, Adamo, my friend there. Put on a show, though. Asma Holic, there he is. Total wins, lower right. First place today. Seven-time champion, Michael Adamo, trying to chase Arthur at eight. We saw some of the legends of the game, and we also saw some up-and-comers battling. Our friend here put on a great show, was one card away, 93% favorite ace-king to ace-queen to win it, and the queen spiked in the river. Adamo came back. And, Brian, give me your takeaways, your thoughts on today, what, on this final table overall. I mean, that, that was a hell of a final table, man. We got to see all sorts of different plays, and, you know, it's, it was a nice mix of uh, mostly very established pros but a couple of slightly less experienced players in there as well. And, um, yeah, we got a war with a great heads-up match at the end of it all. So I'm, I'm glad that I picked this one to do the commentary, huh? Because this, this is a great tournament. I'm glad that they hosted on GG. It's nice to see that the game is alive at this high of stakes, and, you know, you can learn quite a bit by watching these things. I, I know I learned a few things today just watching Adamo do his work, so... Uh, a nice outcome. I mean, deserved. He, he ran good, but he also played very well and, you know, found himself in a lot of tough spots, put other people in a lot of tough spots. It's a good display of high level poker. Yeah, it was. Really was. And again, no deal making. $87,000 heads up match. Asma Hall going to be happy with the 300K plus score. Of course, one and more. 402 going to Adamo. Going to add his lifetime earnings on GG as well as his very prolific career. And again, next week, same place, same time. We're going to be here for the GG Millions. This is going to be another major guest. Hopefully as much talent as we had today. You never know, but it's always stacked, it seems, with some of the best players in the world. And we appreciate everyone watching. Good luck on the giveaways. On the Twitter one, we just announced the winner for the $100 ticket. It ended up being with the Damo winning. Brian, thank you so much for your time. Please give him a follow on the various places. He mentioned Twitter. You can search him as well on Twitch. He has a lot of content highlights and does some coaching and has courses as well. You can find that obviously knows his stuff. The second player ever to reach 10 million in earnings online poker back in 2017. Now, half the final table has 10 million in earnings on GG Poker. So times have changed, but at the time you were ahead of the curve and I know you know your stuff and always a pleasure to catch up. Hope to have you on my podcast here coming up soon and uh, appreciate the time so much, man. Enjoy your family time and get some sleep over there. Yeah, anytime, man. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Brian Paris, everyone. We'll see you guys next week.